Mariner Spring Training on Root Sports is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. We are inside of two weeks until opening day as the countdown to April 4th continues in the desert. And we're here in prime time tonight as Mariner Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines features the hometown nine hosting the Oakland Athletics at the Peoria Sports Complex. Hey there, friends. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Alongside our baseball analyst, Bill Kruger, I am Angie Mentink. Early on in spring training, we hear about players focusing on specific things, whether it's a particular pitch, hitting the ball the other way, and so on. Bill, you have been through a couple of uh, <laughs> yeah. spring trainings. So are we, are we at the point yet where players can start to put it all together? kind of dialed in I'm yep. only kidding uh, but I think for both position players and pitchers it's becoming much more of a real game uh, pitchers are getting past dialing in their mechanics getting through the spring training arm uh, maybe working on just fastball command and adding all the complimentary pitches the hitters they were tracking pitches they're, they're now instead of facing the guy they'll never see that throws a hundred that's going to the minor leagues that can't throw strikes they're seeing real big league pitches that are starting to dial their game in and, and, and in course they're back Bat speed's ready, their timing's ready, and they're starting to take real at-bats and getting multiple at-bats in a game. So we're starting to see that happen. Guys are going to be in the games longer, whether it's starting pitchers, whether it's position players. You're just going to start to get a sense and a flavor of what this team is all about. Yeah, and uh, you uh, see less and less of these guys with 96, 98 Correct. Uh, on their jerseys. Yes. You said one time you were at a camp and really somebody was in 100, or three digits. Yeah, yeah I was able to dodge that. I only had 96 on mine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and of course, uh, for all the new guys on the team, they're trying to work on things while still making a positive first impression, and one of those guys gets the start for the Mariners. Let's take a look at our Lexus uh, pitching matchup. We'll get to the Mariners' side first. Jesse Hahn making his fourth start of the month for Oakland. He's up against Nathan Carnes making his fifth start of the spring as he continues to state his case for the fifth spot in the starting rotation. Carnes will face several projected regulars for the A's tonight. Uh, Marcus Simeon leads off. He is followed by a pair of newcomers in Chris Coughlin and Chris Davis. Mark Canna hitting cleanup. A country breakfast. Billy Butler is fifth. Andrew Lambo, the DH tonight. Josh Fegley, Jake Smolinski, and Eric Sogard close out the starting nine. As for the Mariners, it's going to be Norichika Aoki leading off, followed by Cattell Marte. In the two-hole, Kyle Seeger slots in third, followed by Adam Lind, Chris Iannetta, and Seth Smith, and Steve Clevenger, Luis Sardinius, and Leonis Martin round out the order. Noticeably absent from the Mariners lineup tonight are the stars in the middle, Robinson Cano and Nelson Cruz. But we know what those can do. For more on the top and the bottom of the lineup, we are now joined by Dave Sims, and Mike Blowers from Arizona. Mike, we know about the core guys in the middle of the lineup, but let's talk about first the top three spots in the order. What have you seen to this point here in spring training? Well, I, I think for me, I think what people are going to understand quickly with this club is our on-base percentage, something that we've heard a lot about from Jerry DePoto. Scott Services talked about it. You're going to see that. It's evident. When you look at the numbers by Oki and what he has done, 353 on-base percentage. Marte last year, well over 300. Uh, you look towards the bottom of the lineup. Iannetta last year struggled, but if you look at his career, high on-base percentage guy, he'll probably hit eighth. And then, of course, Martin, everybody's hoping that he can rebound. So they have a lot of speed, but they're also guys that are going to get on base and create some opportunities. I like the speed component because you can have some at the top and some at the bottom so you keep it flowing. Well, I think so, and I, and I think the biggest thing is something that you and I have talked about throughout spring is you sometimes you have to manufacture runs. You're not always going to hit the homer, and you have to be able to do that with some speed, especially in today's game. The Mariners now have that. All right, pretty good situation that we have here brewing in spring training with the Mariners. All right, guys, thanks so much. Well, the Mariners are trying to put it all together offensively and defensively this season and get back to the playoffs. And Nathan Carnes could be a big factor in doing that. We'll take the mound when Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines continues. Love watching your favorite teams on.
Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. And by Frontier Communications, providers of next generation Fios TV and Internet. Well, Nathan Carnes making his fifth start of the spring tonight as he prepares to kick off his fifth major league season with his third team. He had a pretty strong year last season, going 7-5 and five with a 3.67 ERA, and he struck out nearly a batter, an inning, 145 total for the season. That's in 147 innings of work. As you probably know by now, Carnes came over to the Mariners this offseason, along with Boog Powell in that trade that sent Brad Miller, Logan Morrison, and Danny Farquhar to Tampa Bay. But if you haven't had a chance to watch him pitch yet, well, we'll help you get to know him. As we take a look at our CenturyLink, what's next breakdown of his pitch selection. Carnes relies primarily on low 90s fastball, which he throws more than half of the time. He complements that with a very good curveball and a solid changeup. Carnes has had a, uh, a pretty strong spring so far. You have had uh, the chance to see him pitch now, Bill. What stands out to you, and uh, how do you think he will impact this 2016 season? Well, he's an impressive, really not necessarily a young pitcher. He's 28 years old, but uh, a lot of club control. Really came of age last year for Tampa. DePoto's marked the guy that he thinks can really be a breakout pitcher. And what to like about him? Good compact delivery, good arm. He's got a live fastball. We talked about the really good overhand curveball and the changeup that he mixes in it as well. We saw him pitch really well his last turn out. Four and two-thirds, only three hits and a run with seven strikeouts against the Rangers. He's going to be better once the team goes north because he's a fly ball pitcher, an up and down guy, and sinker slider guys are better in spring training because of the conditions. This guy will get better as we get closer up north and start playing real baseball. Yeah, and already this spring he seems to be yep. uh, trending upwards as well. Well, we are down to the final 10 games of spring training, and it all begins uh, with the Mariners and the A's tonight. So let's get you down to Pure, where Dave Sims and Mike Blowers will have the call. Guys, a little win tonight. Absolutely, Angie and Bill, thanks so much. The flags, they are starched here in Peoria, Arizona. Could be a lot of exit stage right this evening for Cactus League Baseball as the Mariners take on the Oakland A's. Good to have you with us here. And folks, looks like they've dressed appropriately for this windy night, but a very yet comfortable at the same time. The last time these two clubs met six days ago, what a wild affair that was. The Mariners put up nine runs in the ninth inning to take an 11-9 lead, and then Oakland comes back to tie it, and we ended it at 11-11. So... More fireworks, Mike? I think so with the way the wind is blowing out tonight. And you heard Bill right there talking about Carnes being a fly ball pitcher. He's going to have to find a way to get the ball on the ground or it could be a long evening. And it goes back to what we've talked about throughout spring training, why it's so difficult to judge these guys sometimes. The conditions are not in his favor tonight. Well, here we go with the first pitch of the ball game. And it's down low to Marcus Simeon. Football one. 67 degrees, wind 20 plus miles per hour. First pitch right at 710. Scott Service said he was very excited to see Nathan Carnes go tonight because in his last start, got off to a different, uh, difficult beginning in that he had uh, most of his pitches were up, but by by the time he finished his last two winnings, he had better control, better command. His fastball command was much better later in the game as he started to settle in. And when we watch him this spring, typically if he's having an issue, it is with the high fastball. I thought his curveball was a really good pitch for him. Did get into some trouble, was able to work out of it. You like to see that. His fastball tonight will be in the low 90s with the good curveball. We had him on after his outing, and he was a little concerned about that was something he was pointing to but sharpening up that command here's a 2-1 to the A's shortstop 2-2 two two. well so far tonight here to the first batter when he's missed with his fastball it has been down so he's trying to make the adjustment athletics come in with a record of 9-9-3 and three. the Mariners 10-11-2 and 2-2 two. Two, two pitch up high for ball 3 Lance Barrett's got balls and strikes Mike Malinsky, Adrian Johnson, and Todd Titchener working the bases tonight. The Mariners have the shift on with Simeon hitting. 3-2 pitch. And he beats the shift. Base hit. Simeon hitting 226 on the spring. 
Oh, well, Polk Count goes right after him with a fastball, 94 miles an hour. And that pitch again right at the knees. He just drops the barrel on it, hits the ball hard through the left side of the infield. Carnes out of Franklin, Pennsylvania, Northeast Pennsylvania. And there's Bob Melvin, two time manager of the year with the A's in 2012 and with Arizona in 20 in 2007. Of course, the Mariners manager in 0304. His sixth year at the helm for the A's. Chris Coglin, a former Cub, hammers one right field. Seth Smith will get it. And get a dropped it. Uh, Coglin had his head up, and he'll get the second. Here comes Simeon. He's coming home, and he's going to score. So Ron Washington, the third base coach, had his eye on him, kept that, kept waving on uh, Simeon, and the Athletics have an early lead. And we'll take a look at it again. It's off the fastball. This fastball at 91 miles an hour. About fell tie. Was able to get it to the inside corner. You see Coglin hit it hard. And then, unfortunately, Seth right there, glove tap. And that's when he dropped it. To be a base hit, E9. Bring up the three-hole hitter, Chris Davis. Davis obtained during the offseason from Milwaukee. Challenge there, and Carnes wins on that pitch. Carnes coming over from Tampa Bay. Back in November. With Washington in 2013, the last two seasons with the Rays. Davis at 226, no homers, and five runs batted in. Breaking ball, hit through the hole, right side. Coglin getting the wave on from third. Here's the throw by Seth Smith. It is not in time. Scoring standing up as Coglin, 2 0 A's. RBI Chris Davis, his sixth. And not the start that Carnes was looking for. This is on the curveball. Sardinas, the second baseman, playing at the middle, so the right side was wide open, and that's exactly where he hit it. Three consecutive hits to start the ball game. It'll bring up center fielder Mark Canna. He's hitting 278 this spring. No homers, three runs batted in. So fouled back. A's last year, last place in the West at 68 and 94. And the Mariners handled them, beating them 13 out of 19 times. Six and three at home, seven and three in Oakland. When the Mariners played the A's last year, Canna typically would be in left field or first base, but he's getting the start in center field tonight. No Billy Burns tonight. We've also seen Canna play some first base. Infield double play depth. 101. Cardinals have been touched up here at the very outset of this ball game. 2 0. Cards get really used to double play right now. 1-1 one, one pitch. Back safely is Chris Davis. Nelson Cruz, Robinson Cano getting the night off. And we're going to hear from Cano, an interview we did earlier after practice. We'll hear that in the second inning. Not much of a lead by Davis. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Founded foul. Getting some good eats here this evening. Ball game and dinner. Hold on to your napkins tonight. Boy, isn't that the truth? Luckily for them, there's no seagulls here to swoop down on them. If this has been <laughs> Oakland, they might be in trouble. Or Seattle. So Karn's trying to get out of a first inning mess. Timeout. 
time. Granite. Carnes gets aside for Mayanetta, and he's ready with the one two. Great ball and great job by Chris. Two balls, two strikes. Only 10 games left in the spring. These last couple of starts are going to be important to Carnes. Talked about Scott's service in his last outing, like the adjustments he was making. I think he'd like to see him get out of this inning, giving up three straight hits. He's competing with James Paxson for that fifth spot in the rotation. It comes at 2-2. Lynn slows it up. That could have been a lot worse. Adam Lynn back after being bothered by the flu, lost about 11 pounds, packed it back on, feels great. Same for Tim Bogar on the right, bench coach. Scott Service has come left, and then Mel Stoudemire Jr. and Pete Harnish at the extreme left of your screen. Two, two pitch to Cannon. Runner goes. Pitch swung on a miss. Throw by Ionetta into center field. And Davis will hold right there as Martin will get it back in. So stolen base for Davis' is first. Oh, they're going to call him out. I think that's going to call Cannon for interference. Ooh, okay. They just called him out. And we'll take a look at it. Good jump. That fell right across home plate on his swing. Lance Barrett, the home base. Home plate umpire made the call right away. So that will definitely help Carnes. That's a huge break. So interference on Kenna. So just like that, two outs. And now to the five hole, and Billy Butler playing at first base tonight. Second year with the A's. Coming over from Kansas City. Having a nice spring, 320, Homer, four runs batted in. Old country breakfast. The nickname he picked up a couple years ago. Carnes <laughs> ahead on two. Carnes like to put him away right here. Limit the damage to two runs. Billy's still pretty quick on that pitch inside. Yeah, they tried to get in on his hands, and I think they did a little bit. He's always been able to hit the fastball, Billy Butler. Martin over in right center. Big gap between Aoki and Martin. Pitch, breaking ball, swing, and a miss. Got him. Damage done, though, in the top half of the first. Two runs on three hits, and error, nobody left. A's two Mariners. Kevin bat here on a windy Wednesday night here in Peoria. I get it. You want a new car.
Give you a good look at Sedona, Arizona, about two hours north up I-17 from here in Phoenix. Let's take a look. Mike at the rest of the Mariner batting order for tonight. Aoki is going to lead things off. Then it's Marte, followed by Seager. Seager hitting third. In the middle of the lineup, you have Lind, Ionetta, and Smith. Clevenger, the DH, he will bat seventh tonight. Sardinas and Martin round out the nine for the Mariners. On the mound, Jesse Hahn. No record in three previous starts this spring. Aoki looks at ball one. On 6'5", 190 out of Norwich, Connecticut. Went to Virginia Tech. Raised six-round pick in 2010. There's a strike to Aoki. Mariners have two switch hitters and everybody else left-handed. So it'll be all tilted on the left-hand side here tonight, batting-wise, to start this ball game. Two and one. Marte and Sardinius. Uh, switch hitters, everybody else are left in. In the lineup, two and one. Okie hitting 250 on the spring. Was off to a slow start. Been swinging the bat much better over the last week, week and a half. Aoki gets in one deep right center field, and it is off the fence. A leadoff double. Second double of the spring for Nori Aoki, and the Mariners answer right back. Gave that a really good ride, helped by that wind. Yeah, we talked a lot about the wind. Take a look at this pitch down and in. Typically for Aoki, we've seen him hit the ball the other way, stay in the middle of the field, but he pulls this one out to right center field about midway up the fence. Let's take a look at the flags. A lot of wind tonight. There's Cattell Marte hitting a 229, no homers and two runs batted in. Down low from Jesse Hahn. And that win, we said at the top, starts, you bet. The American flag out in right field. It's a big flag, and usually for those flags to be totally unfurled, the wind is going to be minimum 20 miles an hour. Marte ahead in the count 2 0. Four doubles and a triple so far. And three for four in base stealing for Marte. They give him a big hole left side in the infield. 2 0. Goes up the middle. A solid smash. Mark Cannon's the center fielder. The throw in is cut off. So the Mariners brewing something here with runners at the corners in the first inning. This ball is also hit hard. Fastball, middle of the plate. On. Very fortunate to get out of the way as he hit it right back at him. Excellent job of staying inside the baseball right there. You can see it slicing back up towards the center fielder. Well, the theme with this Mariner Ball Club under new management. Control this, the strike zone that he did. Can tell Mark Taylor had 2 0 and got a pitch he can handle. Sets it up nicely for Kyle Seeger. Mariner third baseman hitting at 314 with a couple of home runs and nine runs batted in. Again, no Cano and no Cruz. They get tonight off. Two days ago over in Camelback against the Dodgers. Cruz hit one off the end of the bat, still muscled it out for a home run. Strike one to Kyle. The A's will put the shift on with Kyle hitting. Kyle with 26 home runs last year. Keeps up in that total. And every year he's been up here with the big club. Give him a lot of room between the left fielder Davis and the center fielder Canna. Down low from Jesse Hahn, who had a no decision last April 12th in Oakland against the Mariners. And lost 7-2 May 9th at Safeco Field. It's going old school, wearing the pants, cuff them right below the knee. Stripes on the sock.
Here's a 1 1 to Kyle. Breaking ball hit hard. Look out, Casey Candell, first base coach for the Mariners. The good news for Casey is he already has a couple of those arm guards on. Might have helped him. They may have to be like a hockey goalie, just sort of <laughs> knock them down, fend them off. Firm filling up quite nicely here. The stadium here in Peoria. Mariners have the tying runs aboard. Back safely is Marte. Here's a look at the berm. Looking in from right field. Wind at 11 miles an hour. I, I think I'll see and raise you to about 25. I would agree. One two pitch. Is he going to be deep enough? Okie's got pretty good speed. It's shallow. He's not going to come. Cannon makes the play. And there's one out. One out, two on, and that'll bring up Mariner first baseman Adam Lind. Monster home run two days ago. Yesterday, the boys had yesterday off. Big home run against a lefty in the game against the Dodgers. And he got all of it. Hit it over the bullpen to the back wall and a berm at Camelback. Like Kurt Young coming out for Actually, that's Bob Melvin, isn't it? It's Bob Melvin. Yep, it is Bob. Well, Lentz had a really good spring, hitting 333 overall. Bob getting his message in with 10 seconds to spare. I like the new 30 second rule. So Lynn comes in with two home runs, four runs batted in. 333 clip. Adam's been a consistent power guy since getting to the major leagues, and we certainly saw plenty of that during his time with the Toronto Blue Jays. Looks at strike one. Lynn said a big home run years, 35 for the 09 Blue Jays, followed that up with 23 and 26, 23 in Toronto in 2013 and 20 last year, 87 runs batted in for Milwaukee. King ball, and he tried to lose it up in that air current. Out in front of it just a little bit. It was a good pitch to hit. Breaking ball up in the zone. It's 0 2 to Adam. Runners at the corners, one out. And he's got a run in the first thing, an error by Seth Smith in right field, and an RBI single by Chris Davis. Here's the 0 2 shift on. And hit the other way. Look out. The TV crew hang in there down there. Stay alive. And card staying alive down there with the third base side. Here's the 0-2. Marte almost got him. I think he lost his footing trying to dive back in. Absolutely did. Moving his hand around. Hopefully he didn't hurt his wrist. That's the last thing you need. Marte has performed quite well in the field, and his batting average is starting to come around. 0 2 to Lind. And struck him out. Fast ball running away. Hahn has a good two seam fastball running right off the outside corner. 
A couple of strikes, Lynn just trying to protect the plate. Brings up Chris Ionetta, 261 with a homer and five runs this spring. Five runs batted in. Chris moving along nicely, learning this pitching staff. It's a big part of the get to know you process with this Mariner Ball Club this year. It's interesting talking to Ron Washington and uh, Mark Katze. Katze, the bench coach for the A's. It's almost like the conversations we've had with Mariner coaches. And the big difference is that the A's last year, everybody acknowledged they had maybe their worst clubhouse ever. This year, change in personnel. Ron Washington telling me that it's not about the individual, it's about the group and Katze, who you played with. And he runs the meetings every morning and says, hey, I want everybody to know where they're at. And that's what Tim Bogart does with the Mariner Ball Club. There's Wash. Katze to, to your right, blocked out by the umpire. Bob Melvin to the left, behind the rail. Here's the 2 Mariners trying to get a run in here. Two outs and runners at the corners. Aoki started it with a double to right. Marte singled him to third, and that's where they remain two outs later. Oh, 2 to Ionetta. Hit well. Right field. Got some carry. Can't get it. That's the right fielder, Smolinski. Aoki scores. Marte flying around third. He'll score easily. And a two-run double ties it at 2-2 off the bat of Chris Ionetta. RBI 6-7 and seven for Chris. His second double of the spring. And a quick response by the Mariners here in the first inning. And some really good hitting by Ionetta. You can see the catcher set up on the outside corner. That ball ended about middle away, but trying to protect against the breaking ball. Able to hit the fastball down in the corner. He Smolensky. did it with two strikes. Yes. Smolensky, the right fielder, was playing more towards right center. Smolensky had a long run. Brings up one time A, Seth Smith. He's having a tremendous spring. Inside as he has to move his feet. 13 for 24. That's a 542 clip. No homers and two runs batted in. A double and a triple. The A's will put the shift on with Seth hitting. We saw that a lot last year. Good look at the defense for the A's. And he tried to put the Mariners in front here. Ionetta at second. And he looks at strike one, 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Seth Smith, 248 hitter last year. He's got a 1-1 one, one count here. Breaking ball hung up. He couldn't do anything with it. One and two. Han has done a pretty good job here in the first of keeping his fastball down. But his curveball, you mentioned it, Dave. We've seen probably three of them here in the inning that have been left up in the zone. And a lot of pitches for him. This will be the 23rd pitch of the inning for Han. Breaking ball, hit the right field. Smolenski can't get it. Seth Smith's going to run a little bit. Ionetta scores 3-2 Mariners. Smitty to second. He's going to get the third easily. They'll hold right there. Mariners lead 3-2. Seth Smith with his second triple of the season. Picks up an RBI his third. This looks like it's the breaking ball again. It is. It's a curveball, and it is right in the middle of the plate. Smolenski really didn't have a chance to catch that. Probably should not have gone for the dive. Just stay in front of it. That's the reason why Seth was able to get a triple out of the play. 
So a two run double and RBI triple all coming with two outs. Smitty was down in the count one and two. Ionetta was down 0 and two and they delivered. There's Steve Clevenger, DHing tonight, backup catcher. Started out with the Cubs organization, then the, then the Orioles. Uh, he was a shortstop when he came up, and now he's, played, he's a pretty good catcher and play some first base as well. He too battled the flu. He was on with this uh, Monday night on the Cactus League report on Mariners Radio. And like so many guys we've spoken to, they, at this stage, and you know, Mike, you've been there, rare to go start the regular season, but he really is impressed with how things have been running this camp. It's a good option for Scott Service to have on your bench as your backup. The fact that he hits left-handed. Breaking ball fouled off. Ionetta doing the catching tonight, of course, a right-handed hitter. But you're going to run up against some pretty good right-handed pitching in the American League, and it's nice to have an extra left-handed bat. And you can see the total, 27 pitches for Hahn here in the first. Another run out there. Here's the one, two. They fouled it back. Cleveranger born and raised in Baltimore. Was really enjoyed playing for his hometown team. And new beginnings here with the Mariners. Breaking ball. Off the plate, two and two. Two, two pitch fouled off Well, he's done a heck of a job. He is building that pitch count on Han. Be the eighth pitch coming up. Throughout the spring, up and down the lineup, we have seen Mariner hitters do exactly that. Pretty good pitch by Han right there, just spoiling it, hoping to get something in the middle of the plate. Do it again at two and two. Line drive, center field. Canna goes back, makes the catch. A terrific inning for. The Mariners, they get three runs on four hits. There was an error. They leave them in. When we come back, we'll hear from Robinson Cano who has the night off. But he had some interesting things to say about the Mariners, whose spring training is presented by Delta Airlines. The Mariners take a... Three two earlier today caught up with Robinson Cano. Tell me about your health coming off of last season and you had the operation in October. How how you feeling? Well I'm feeling great, you know. Thanks God that um you know I got a surgery early, so you know I'll be able now to use my hips, be moving better, bat swinging pretty good and uh you know it's health right now, so just keep praying to stay healthy the rest of the season. Well, you got to feel good about the three home runs you got. There were three line drives all here. Well, they don't count here, but but you got to feel good. Coming coming out of surgery, you want to see the result of where you want to see how you're feeling, and, you know, things got to feel good. Tell me, what, what are you seeing so far in this camp? Well, I mean, I see a lot of good energy, a lot of positivities, and, 
I see um, that, that unity in the, in the club out the man and you've been everyone together. We get to know each other, no matter if you're first time in spring training. But the thing is to keep the team together. Mane has done a great job. We talked earlier about the top and the bottom of the order, the new guys have added. What have you seen there, the guys that you can, that should be on base for you and, and Nelly and Seager to drive in? Well, I mean, I, I, what I see, the thing that we don't have in the past, we got now more than three, four guys that can still base any time, guys that can bond, guys that can change the game. Now you don't have to wait for a homer or a double to change the game. Now we can start from the beginning. I mean, you got a great lead off Aoki, you got Marte, you got Leone, so you got guys that can bond, move them over. Now we're gonna, we can play the small and the big game. Another thing you and I talked about a while ago, you said that defensively you feel really good about this whole unit. You can go back on ball. Tell the folks about that. Well, I mean, yeah, like I say, it's kind of like um, it feels good that you can see around that um, the whole defense that we got, especially in the outfield. You know, in the past we got we don't have that. Now we got speed back there because, you know, with the speed you, you can make any play. So now I would say the, the outfield and the infield, now we got a team that we can compete with anyone. Let me just readdress first half last season. How tough was it for you going through that first half last season? Then you come back with the great second half. Well, it was tough for me, not, not, not only because, um, you know, number-wise. It's more how I feel physically. And uh, mentally, it was like, you know, it's hard because you're trying to figure out what it is. And you're waking up, and it's going to be the same thing over and over and over. But, um, you know, things got the things changed in the second half. And, you know, I got a surgery, so... I think uh, a, lot, a lot of people was um, thinking that because I, I wasn't doing good, I was trying to make excuses. But um, you know, see the result. I got to win the surgery, get it done, get it over with, and get ready for the season. Tell me this: How did you play such a great second half with the numbers you put up? What 15 home runs? You had 331 the second half with the double with the double hernia. How'd that happen? Well, I don't honestly, I don't know. I and mean, the doctor said the left one was worse than the right one because the one about me was the right one. So the left was worse than the left, than, than the right one. I mean, I don't know. I would say it's got willing and. Uh, you know, played every single day. To, um, you know, things got, like I said, a bounce back and be able to have a good second half. Your, uh, your infield mate can tell Marte, what are you seeing this year that's different from last year? Well, the difference that I see, you, you can see he, see he look more comfortable, see more relaxed, and that's what you want. You want a guy to come and feel, you, to feel like he's home, feel relaxed, be able to make any play because you want to be yourself. And if he can be himself, he can be a pretty good player. And then Seager, and uh, lastly, Seager and, and Cruz and you in the middle, I like that group. Nelly, Nelly hit a ball the other day at Campbellback Ranch. I don't know if he, he told you, but hit it off the end of the bat, still got it out. Yeah, so I was there. I was, he was like, oh, man, I hit it at the end. It's still going out. I said, man, you Nelly. You're strong. Come on, man. Don't be surprised. Bobby, thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. Robinson Cano, a lot of fun with him. Having a good spring. 314, three homers, eight runs batted in. Slugging at 657 and a 333 on base. And the, the, the greatest thing, Mike, is you, we talk about it all the time. He's healthy. He's healthy. Nice conversation that you had with him, by Thank the way. You. Yeah, that, that was that was great to hear. And that's something that you and I have commented about all spring, and that is he has pulled the ball with authority, which is something we didn't see a lot of last year. And he's done that consistently throughout the spring because he's healthy. You heard him talk about his hips and being able to get that back into his swing. So... Uh, it's really good to see. Three home runs all hit here. Rockets. There's Carnes. Fell behind Jake Smolinski. And Smolinski's walk. That's the first free pass in the ballgame. Two outs. Nine hole hitter. Eric Sogard, the second baseman, steps in. Jay Buner's in the house. Edgar Martinez on his left and Scott Brocious, Scott Brocious on the right. Scott was with us on the radio program Monday night. Ken Griffey Jr. was in town. It was that Monday and Tuesday? Jay came into camp yesterday. I believe that's uh, that's correct. And yeah. also the Players Association had their annual spring stop by here in um, Peoria. Saw Tony Clark, president of PA, and Bobby Benia. Almost didn't recognize him. Hall of Famer Dave Winfield was here. Good to see him. Phil Bradley. Carnes got the first two outs. Well, since then, it's one of the things that he struggled with throughout the spring, and that is getting his fastball down. We saw the walk, and now the first couple of pitches here to Sogard. Fastball's up. 2-0 to Sogard. 
two outs, runner at first. Up high again, 3 and 0. Oh. Over the years, what do you find that the guys are have they'll have will be more apt to have less control of the fastball or curveball in spring? Down here in Arizona, most of the time it's the curveball. We talked about Han and missed with another fastball up. We talked about Han and his curveball leaving it up and we heard Bill Kruger talk about that a little bit. You can be more effective with a slider. That curveball will have more bite once the season starts as Mel Stottlemyre make a trip out to the mound and use his 30 seconds. But for Carnes right now, with him, and it really hasn't been his off-speed pitches. It's been his fastball command when he's lost it. And it typically, it's the same way. It's up. And I think that front shoulder starts to fly open. That elbow drops a little bit and... Got some problems. Okay. He, he went two and two to Lambeau, popped him up, ground out to Fegley on a 0 1 pitch, and thrown a strike to the last two guys. Well, and it's the eight and nine hitters, and that's something that you really don't want to see. So he had a chance for a quick inning after throwing 19 pitches in the first, and now he's extended this inning with two walks. James Paxton, we're told, had a good outing against minor leaguers yesterday. As you know, Felix, they got Iwakuma, Taiwan Walker, Wade Miley, fifth spot. It's the one that these guys are battling. Paxton yesterday, eight strikeouts, one walk over five innings. He gave up a couple of runs, a couple of solo home runs. Only four hits in the five innings. So Smolenski, he's at second. So guarded first with two outs. Top of the order, Simeon. Single to the left to open up the ball game. And came around and scored on the Seth Smith error. Here's the 0 1. Count at 1 and 1. Marcus Simeon. He 35 errors at shortstop last year, but midway through last season when Ron Washington came over, he's been a project, a pet project of, of Wash. That one off of Ionetta's mask, and the young man has come a long ways. The A's would certainly like to see him get that part of his game figured out. He's a good athlete, a good hitter. He has all the tools to play shortstop, and really a lot of those errors on the routine play. Terrific athlete. have been a second baseman, a third baseman, and an outfielder coming up. Well, that's a premium position, shortstop. Two and two. So the Athletics battling the Mariners here. This 3-2 lead for Seattle. Two on, two out, and a 2-2 pitch coming from Carnes. Breaking ball hit through the hole. Beats the shift. Smolensky coming around. He'll score. We got a tie ball game at 3-3. Two for two night for Marcus Simeon. Picks up an RBI his second of the spring. And it's on the curveball again. With the shift on two strikes, it's right on the outside corner. Not a bad pitch. It just goes the other way with it. You see Sardinas, the second baseman, playing right up the middle. So it started off as a nice inning. Quick two outs. Walk, walk, RBI single. Tie ball game at three. Here's Chris Coglin. Single to right. 19 pitches in the first, and now 19 pitches here in the second. There's a strike. Chris Coughlin with the Cubbies the last couple of years. Hit 250. 16 homers, 41 runs batted in last season in 148 games. A big rip. 
pretty came good, up empty. Yeah, pretty good change up from Carnes. 84 miles an hour is able to keep it down. There are your runners. Sogard at second. Simeon at first. Coughlin's first five years with the Miami Marlins. He's going to know two pitch. Solid smash gapper left center field. A lot of people running. Sogard scores. Simeon right behind him. Coughlin digging for third. Here's a throw to third and safe. Two run triple Chris Coughlin. RBI's five and six for him, his first triple of the spring, and the A's lead it five to three. And this is on the changeup. We talked about the changeup, the pitch before, where he was able to get it down, that one up, out over the plate. And again, this is all with two outs. We're talking about the wind, and... Certainly not helping yourself by putting a couple of hitters on with two outs with the walks. The walks have hurt him. Chris Davis, base hit the right his first time and fouls went off. May want to settle in, big guy. Wind blowing out. Boys swinging the bat pretty good here tonight. He was scheduled to go five, but where his pitch count is right now, I'm not sure he's going to make it. Oh and two to Chris Davis. He had 27 home runs last year for Milwaukee. 66 runs batted inning. Carnes neck deep in trouble. Only in the second inning. Davis, the seventh man to the plate. Missed outside. All and two strikes. Inning started with Lambo winding out to right, Fegley grounding out the short. Walk, walk, RBI single, two run triple. Chris Cogman knocked in those two runs. Swift the breaking ball, two and two. About this time, he's really got to find a good. Find a good uh, mindset, tough it out, get out of this thing. Again, the curveball was a good pitch right there. He tried to throw it down, was able to get it there. It's been more his fastball command. We saw Jesse Hahn throw 31 or 32 pitches in the first and 26 pitches now for Carnes here in the second. 2-2 two -two with a man at third. Struck him out. That'll do it. But lots of damage done by the athletics. They get three runs on one, two, three. Two hits, leave a man. They lead it five to three. Got some news for you when we come back to Arizona.
And with just 12 days to go until the start of the regular season, we now officially know who the Mariners will be facing on opening day in Texas. And as expected, the Rangers announced today Cole Hamels will be their opening day starter. It's been a mixed bag for Amel Hamels against the Mariners in his career. It was 3-2 and two with a 3.99 ERA and six starts, and he struck out 40 batters in 38 and a third innings pitched. All right, so it's Hamels, guys. Back to you. All right, Angie, thank you very much. The Rangers will be looking forward to you, Darvish, coming back as well. Strike one to Luis Sardinas. Wonderful spring for him. 372, a homer, 10 runs batted in, four doubles, a triple, and two stolen bases. Playing at second base tonight. A few days ago, played in center field. We've seen him at short and third. Do you think he's locked up one of the spots on the bench for this club? I'd be absolutely stunned. And also, I'm with you. He's really played well. Factor in that Scott, he and Scott Service go way back to when a young man signed with Texas, about a 16, 17 year old. And Scott's watched this kid come along, and this spring has been outstanding. Put him in the outfield the other day. Yeah, it was, he didn't get any play out there, but I tell you what, he, he's such a good athlete. Many acted told us the other day that uh, they're going to give him a shot at first base, too. Broken bat ground ball to Simeon. And just got him. Good hustle down the line. Dad and son bonding can't beat it. right-hander can you tell oh he's a right-hander you snap off a couple a couple of change-ups like Felix Looked like he had a two-seamer right there <laughs> and he's Martin Mariners center fielder hitting a 200 a homer six runs batted in he is six for six in base steal A little late there, one one He was just trying to cheat on the fastball, catch it out in front. Missed with the first one. Felt pretty good about getting another fastball. Unfortunately, it was up out of the zone. Two balls and one strike. Martin, a long time in the Texas organization. Swing and a miss. Really good year back in 2014, 274. Seven homers and 40 runs batted in. Fell off last year to 219, only 95 games because of injuries. 2-2. Two -two. Stays alive. We haven't seen a lot of it in the spring, but talked about it for him in 13 and 14 amongst the league leaders in infield hits and bunt base hits. Breaking ball missed. Full count. We were talking about his speed in the six stolen bases. You'd like to see him take advantage of that. Put the ball on the ground. Pay it off right here. Be pitch number eight coming up. Noria Aoki's on deck. It's off to a good start with a double and a run scored. Three two to Martin. Breaking ball struck him out. Two down. So two away here in the second inning. Best prices. And best seat locations for all games are available to Mariners season ticket holders. With full season and 20 game plans, you'll save up to 40% over single game prices. Plus, enjoy exclusive experiences, postseason priority, and more. So join the club when you visit Mariners.com slash 16. Can you wave with the other hand? Top of the order in Aoki.
Hit the other way. That'll be a base hit. We'll see a lot of that this summer. Two for two. We've seen him do that a lot this spring. Talked about the double in the first. He actually hit it out to right center field. It's been rare for him to pull the ball. Really staying in the middle of the field. But he stays on this breaking ball. Another curveball up in the zone from Hahn. He takes advantage of it. Two outs, a man aboard for Cattell Marte. Single to center. Got ahead in the count 2 0 oh against Jesse Hahn. Ball one. And he hit it hard. The base hit back in the first inning. Line drive right past the cap of Hahn. Almost Charlie Browned him. Yeah. Here's the 1 0. -oh. oh, they got him. Oh, he oh. threw it away. What a break. Timing wise, he looked like yeah. he was going to be a dead duck. Oh, he would have been out. He won. Aoki to second. You'll see him leaning. Actually, took a half a step. Mariners catch a break. Marte represents a tying run at the plate here in the bottom of the second. And he's got a 2 0 account just where he was in the first inning when he singled and scored. Another wild one involving the A's and the Mariners. 11 11, six days ago over at Mason. That's down low, 3 0. Mariners will get their first look at the A's when we open up the home season. The home opener is going to be Friday, April 8th. Ken Griffey Jr., new Hall of Famer, will be throwing out the first pitch. 3 0 pitch. Three and one. <laughs> Jesse Hunt spent the 14 season with San Diego, went seven and four. He was six and six with the A's last year. Three one pitch to Marte. And he'll take his base. Mariners have two on and two outs for Kyle Seeger. First walk issued by Jesse Hahn. Both starters really struggling with their pitch count. Hahn now at 51. You can see Bob Melvin shaking his head. And we're getting late in spring training, but the managers do not like to see their starting pitchers have to labor like this, throwing a lot of pitches early in the ball game. Seager represents go ahead run here. He flied out to center field in the first inning. Begley make that to Han. Similar situation as Carnes had in the top half of the inning. Got two quick outs and then some trouble. Carnes wound up throwing 29 pitches in the top half of the inning. Three runs on two hits. Seven men came to the plate. Mariners threatened with two fast runners out there with Seeger at the dish. Line drive left field that will get down getting a wave on his Aoki and he's going to score. So Kyle Seeger drives in the run. Making a 5 4 ball game. Seeger with his 10th RBI of the spring. Talked about it Dave at the start of the game that the pitchers were going to have to try to get the ball down because of the win with all these elevated fastballs. Being line drives all over the place on both sides. And this wind blowing out hard to right field is not 
a hurler's best friend, to say the least. There's the American flag, half staff, passing of Nancy Reagan, former first lady. That was Kurt Young, pitching coach, who came out that time, and now Adam Lind will be the hitter. Struck out on an 0 2 pitch. Lind over the course of his career, a 293 hitter against righties compared to 213 against lefties. They brought him over here to do a lot of damage. Breaking ball, ball one. And the A's have the shift on again. So the left side of the infield wide open. See Coglin, the third baseman. A lot of room. Lynn, the sixth hitter here in the second inning. And we have played 59 minutes as we play in the bottom of the second inning. 2 0. As a veteran player and you're watching a young kid struggle like this, must be making you nuts, right? <laughs> I don't know about nuts, but I, I think that you feel for him and you know that they, these are opportunities that you, especially at this point in camp with just 10 games to go, you, you'd really like to see him sharper. And He's not. Three no, and all. Well, it, you have to be able to command the strike zone. And you can see it, 55 pitches, and he's working here in the second. 3-0 to Adam Lind. That's a strike. You think Scott Service will be a guy to throw out some green lights at the big boys here this season? A lot of green. We saw a lot of it the last couple of years. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think if you have a chance to drive in runs, Cano, Seeger, Cruz, of course, and probably Adam would be the guys to take some chances with. 3-1 pitch, a couple of men on. Chopped it foul. Two outs, two on. With the brain trust down there, Scott Service, Tim Bogar. And Edgar Martinez left to right. Chris Prieto, quality insurance coach. 3-2. Runners go. Breaking ball. Hit foul. Hit hard. And we have a right-hander starting to get loose in the bullpen for the A's. And it's because of the amount of pitches, I'm sure that Bob Melvin had Han scheduled to go for five innings. He's not going to get there. He's got like no chance. Angel Castro heating up three and two to Lynn. Two on, two out. Pitch. Breaking ball, chop foul. Look out in the dugout. Marin is down a run. You got Marte with plus speed. He's at second. Seeger at first. Well, here we go. Three and two. Runners take off. Fouled off again. Good interval works for Mr. Messrs. Marte and Seeger here with all these foul offs. Yeah, they're staying loose, that's for sure. Pretty good swing right there by Lynn on the fastball after a couple of 3 2 curveballs. Came back with a fastball out over the plate. Aggressive swing. Be pitch number nine coming up. Runners go, the pitch. Way outside, bases loaded for Chris Iannetta. 
second walk. He's walked two of the last three men that he's faced. It is not a good outing here for Jesse Hahn. You have to wonder sometimes, even, I think it's probably especially true for young pitchers. We have a couple of them going in Hahn and Carnes. They understand what the situation is, and with this wind blowing out, almost trying to pitch away from it, being too careful, trying to be too fine. Iannetta tried to clear the bases with that swing. He's got a two run double to right to his credit already. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> He's more than, than aware of all the conditions. Fastball misses. 1 1. So Marte's at third. You got Seeger at second. And Adam Lind at first with two outs. Mariners down a run 5 4. Ionetta, that's going to be enough to drop in. Marte scores. Seeger right behind him. Digging for third is Lind, and he'll get there standing up. Mariners on top. Chris Ionetta have a night. Two run single. He's driven in four. 6-5 Mariners. Inside out swing on a fastball trying to get it in on his hands. Jams him a little bit, but he fights it off. The Mariners answer right back. Athletics put up two in the first. Mariners get three in the bottom half. Three in the top half of the inning for the A's. Mariners answer with three and still with an opportunity for more with Seth Smith in an RBI triple in his first at bat. Smith is the eighth man to the plate. And he has had a great spring. Came into the game hitting 542, and as Dave mentioned, a triple in his first at bat of this game. Runners at the corners, two outs. Jesse Hunt, his pitch count, as you can see, up to 65. We're only in the second inning. Wind blowing out hard to right. See if he can get one up in the air. That was a swing. He, that was his intention. Mariners trying to keep the pressure on. O2 to Seth Smith. Ball one. Smith, such a consistent hitter. Does he remind you of anybody you played with or, or against during your time? I'll have to think about that, but you know what's unique about him is we first saw him was Colorado, and for the most part, he was a pinch hitter, very aggressive hitter. And I think that now that he's Getting a lot more starts, a regular player. You see more at bats like that, and he's more patient, I think, at the plate, willing to go the other way. We talked to him about a week ago and we mentioned that what a good spring he's having. And I asked him about the shifts, and he recognizes them, and he said he does. He said, he said, depends on how he's feeling. If he's swinging the bat well, he will not try to hit the ball the other way. He doesn't care what they're trying to do, but if he doesn't feel real good, he'll give in and, and go the other way and pick up some base hits. And, that's going to be it for Jesse Hahn. A lot of pitches for him tonight. Boy, he had a nightmarish two innings. As the Mariners are going to send up their ninth man to the plate. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. 7-5 Mariners in the second. Honda believes in help.
spoiled during our month here in Arizona with these wonderful sunsets as the Mariners lead 7-5. And Mariners Spring Training Baseball live with the MLB.com at Bat app. Stay connected all spring with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball. We got some live hitting here by the Mariners. They have done a heck of a job here. Seven runs on eight hits already. The sun having gone down, much to the delight of these Mariner fans. Good crowd on hand this Wednesday night. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, and Root Sports crew here. Cool 67 degrees at first pitch. The wind just joining it, blow, join, joining us. The wind blowing out hard to right field. Steve Clevenger, ninth man to the plate. And Hal Castro, the new pitcher. And look at even an indication of how strong the wind has been. One zero to Clevenger. That's this one right to Simeon. Boats it. And just gets to the bag in time. Mariners get four runs on four hits. One error, leave a couple. Big inning to take the lead at 7-5. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. Welcome back. We want you to join the conversation for up-to-date game information and live interaction. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Check us out and stay connected with Root Sports. You can also follow us individually as well. Angie Bentink here along with Bill Kruger. All right, we're walking you up to opening day. Nathan Carnes, today's pitcher, uh, one of those guys in the mix for one of the spots in the starting rotation. The question is, Bill, does he take a step forward tonight? Are you seeing progress through this start? Well, there's a lots of ups, ups and downs in spring training for pitchers. This is a difficult night to pitch, particularly for an up-and-down pitcher like Nathan Carnes. You've got a 20-mile-an-hour in, howling out, uh, straight out. Uh, he's a fly ball, curveball pitcher. You're not going to get the same bite on your curveball. So maybe he gets a little bit of a hall pass for that, but I think the two walks after two outs – in the second inning were a little bit suspect, and that really was what's cost him that second inning. And those are the things that I think uh, Scott Service is going to be a little bit uh, unhappy with. Uh, Carnes has got a good arm. You saw him starting to mix in his change up a little bit more. That was very helpful because the A's were hunting the fastball early. Uh, but I think you just like his delivery. You like his stuff. You kind of have to get behind, beyond results. You watch and Han and uh, Karn struggle. Both these guys are up and down pitchers with pretty good arms, and it's just a bad night to try to be good. A fly ball pitcher he gets a ground ball here, though. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, going to, uh, to get away. Uh, okay, flags flying through the air quickly. This game not moving very quickly. <laughs> Jesse Hahn doesn't make it uh, through 
the the second inning of this one. Uh, but this is at the point where you want to see these starting pitchers going deeper into the game, not having to leave in the second inning, Bill. Um, it, and, and are you seeing the separation maybe you thought you'd be seeing between Paxton and Carnes at this point? I think it's 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 a judgment call. You know, Paxton really struggled for a couple of turns in a row. Then he pitched well in a minor league game. Carnes was great his last turn, not so good tonight. Uh, I think it's it, it's it, you really have to hold judgment until the end of spring training. You want to kind of see these guys really pull it together. Uh, the last turn or the last two turns, uh, that's when you can start to say, okay, this guy is really getting himself ready to pitch as the the, the bell starts to ring. But uh, I think an educated eye is what you're going to have to have, and you're going to have to have some reserved judgment because of the conditions in spring training. Uh, we got to check in with Dave Sims. Dave Sims, we're not getting out of here in less than four hours, are we? Uh, we put them on, they get few back. <laughs> the mayors put them on, get a few back. <laughs> Another night in baseball. As we mentioned back uh, six days ago, these two teams played to an 11-11 tie. Mariners put up nine in the ninth inning to tie it and then gave it right back in the bottom half, and it was a merciful, hey, boys, that's good. See you later. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, everybody had had enough at that point. Uh, guys, yesterday the team got the day off. Uh, Paxton did not. He throws five innings, allowed two runs, both those off of home runs, but he struck out eight. Is he starting to show you more of what you want to see? And my question is, if you're basically in a tie between Paxton and Carnes, does one of these guys go to the bullpen just because he's more suited to? I, I think personally, if if James is not going to be the fifth starter, I doubt that they would put him in the pen. Uh, I think that there's a chance for Carnes. Um, I, I know that Jerry Depoto was talking about it, and I asked him the question. He, he said that he likes his makeup. He's a guy that's, that's going to get after it. Um, so that maybe there's a chance for him to be one of the guys out in the bullpen. But I don't think that they would want to do that with James Paxton. Is that just because of his body type, Bill? Is it just because this guy just is a starter and he needs a little bit of time and everything else to get going? I think that's pretty fair. He's got a long delivery. He's got a real high arm slot. There's a lot of timing that has to hit correctly for him. He's never really been asked to speed it up and get it into a game. So I think he's really more destined for starting rotation time. Uh, where Carnes... He's got good stuff. I think the intriguing thing, I mean, Carnes is a guy that got in a trade, Mike, and you know, you, you kind of want to see that happen. He had a great year in Tampa last year, but as you well know, uh, early in the season, he could vulture up a bunch of wins pitching, you know, yeah. two, three innings in the middle of the game and really helping a short bullpen right now. If James packs, and let's just say it's an even ball, they're both pitching about the same. Yeah, I, I think that you're right, Bill, on that end of it, and, and especially early in the season. As you know, the starters are not going to go as deep as they will later in the season because they're going to be limited on their pitch counts. And this is a guy that, that, that it looks to me, too, you mentioned his delivery earlier. He's a guy, I think, that could pitch out of the bullpen, and if you need him to get a, uh, an inning or two, or more importantly, be the long guy because you're going to need those guys early in the year in April, and that's the reason why they're going with seven relievers. I think he fits that mold better than James. Okay, all right, but I'm going to play devil's advocate here. What if you get in that position where Charlie's not ready to go and Mike uh, Montgomery's just not looking uh, like uh, you'd hoped he was down there and you say, I've got to have a lefty? Well, I would say this. I, I think that <laughs> one, you have Nuno. You have Nuno out there who's getting loose right now. So, and, and he did a nice job doing a lot of different things for the Mariners last year. So he's a valuable guy to have in your pen. But I, I, I learned this from Lou Pinella, and Bill, you know this too. It doesn't do you much good to have a left-hander in the pen if you can't get the left-handers out. That's going to have to be his job. And Charlie, unfortunately, isn't going to be ready to go, and he's one of the best in the business. And, Bill, when you have these types of games, you see that too, even a swing yeah. bunt for a base hit. Yeah, they're, 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 they're pushing uh, breaking balls the other way, change up the other way, you get the swing and bunt. Uh, yeah, this is not a game where, where you need to see that happen. Of course, that's the pitcher looking at the game, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, not, not, not an easy game, a lot of crooked numbers. You're just wondering how it's all going to end. <laughs> and, Bill, uh, let me ask you this, though. Let me ask. Let me ask you this, Bill. When you talk about, about Paxton and, and now yeah. Carnes tonight, yeah, I, I get it. The conditions are terrible. We talked about that at the start of the game, and, and you were expecting some runs to be scored. But can you look at that when you say when you're looking at it and, and trying to be objective, can you break it down as simple? How is he commanding his fastball? What is, what's the bite on his breaking ball? For me tonight, it looks to me as if he has a pretty good curveball, but it's been his fastball command. 
Yeah, I agree. He's had trouble finding his release point, and he doesn't look like he's advanced to the point where he's got lanes of the plate working. When we're talking about fastball command, uh, you've got to, whether you're throwing a straight one or one that, that runs and sinks, you've got to think about lanes, outside half, inside half. And right now it kind of looks like he's just trying to throw the ball through the, 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 the strike zone. Uh, that's not going to be good enough unless you've just got dynamite, dynamite off-speed stuff that you can land any time. Uh, he's going to have to get better at that, and uh, that's a good point. Boy, here's the drive crank deep to left center field. And that's up on the berm and gone. A three-run homer by Jake Smolinski. That was a bomb. His first homer. Runs his RBI total to seven. And we got a pure six brawl here. It's only in the third. It's nine seven A's. And that's going to do it for Nathan Carnes. Bring in Vidal Nuno. Now we we're just talking about commanding the strike zone. You can see that pitch up in the zone, middle of the plate. Pretty good catch out there, though. Nathan Carnes, not a good night here as he is chased in the third, having given up nine runs. Nine seven, Oakland. The Seattle Mariners baseball on Route Sports being brought to you by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Buy steel to find your local steel dealer. Visit steeldealers.com. And buy CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Panoramic view, the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. All right, old school jerseys in the house. Gotta like it as Vidal Nuno takes over. And the performance by Nathan Kearns, not with, and he's got the Walla Walla Sweets underneath. All right, representing the uh, Kearns, Kearns performance at uh, Walla Walla Sweets, a college league for, a baseball league for college kids. But Kearns, a disappointing out, outing tonight. This is playable to pop up off the bat of Sogard. The wind. Big factors. Adam Lynn makes the play. There's two outs. Corn's tough outing. Two and a third, eight hits, nine runs. It'll be interesting to see what he does in his next outing, Dave. See how he can bounce back from this one. The Dal Nuno takes over. Service very impressed by Nuno as we were last year. There's a fly ball center field that Leonis Martin will take care of. A's have not been shut out in an inning so far. Two in the first, three in the second, four in the third. They lead 9 7. Mariners Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines.
sports desk. The Sounders may have a bye this week, but we'll help you fill your soccer void. Join us for Sounders FC All Access only on Root Sports. We take you behind the scenes, giving you unprecedented access to the players and coaches that are shaping the future of soccer in the Emerald City. Visit RootSports.com for your local show times. All right, Dave, Mike, back to you. I think uh, we finished that uh, top half of the third in record time. <laughs> well, let's see. That looks like a softball score to me. 9-8-1 and one for the Athletics, 7-8-2 and two for the Mariners. Sardinius is going to lead it off against Angel Castro. Luis tonight grounded out to short. Chris Iannette has driven in four runs tonight. Seth Smith's driven in two. Seeger's driven in a run. Sardinius, Martin, and Aoki, 8 9 and 1. You're in the home third. How tough a night was it on the starters tonight? Han came in, Jesse Han came in with an ERA of 6.00. Seven runs all earned in an inning and two thirds. His ERA is blown up to 10.97. Next pitch in there for strike three and one. Carnes came in with the 3 2 9 ERA. Nine runs, eight earned. He's at 7 3 1 for the spring now. The full count to Sardinius. Lanny Smart Teens on deck. Backhanded by Simeon. One away. Second time he's grounded out to the shortstop. Pretty good at bat, though. He hit it hard. It was right at Simeon. We talked about Simeon, what a good athlete he is. You can see the strong throwing arm. Here's Martin struck out on a 3 2 pitch. That was in the second inning. That fouled off. A wild one here if you're just joining us. The Mariners in the second inning after a ground out and a strikeout. Picked up four runs on four hits, helped by an error. I gave the Mariners a 7 5 lead, but they gave it right back in the top half of the third. Four runs on three hits. Big three run homer by Jake Smolinski. Dave, I'll go out on the limb and say the scoring isn't over tonight. If you like to play the O and the U's, the overs and unders, take the over tonight. Yeah, I think so. Tough conditions for the pitchers. Two and one. Wind's been like that since we got to the ballpark. You can even feel it down in the practice field when the guys are taking BP. Three and one. A lot of hitters counts tonight. <laughs> Oki waiting on deck. He's having a good night. Two for two. Has scored a couple of runs. Lead off hitter for the Mariners. Three and two to Martin. Castro out of. Pimentel Duarte in the Dominican Republic, 33 years old. Western Oklahoma State College. Sogar, nice play. Two down. Well, the Mariners have hit the ball hard a couple of times here in the inning. Nothing to show for it. Be remiss if we did not acknowledge the passing of one of baseball's greatest ambassadors. Joe Garagiola passed away at age 90 today. Played nine years in the bigs with the Cardinals, Pirates, Cubs, and Giants, but went on to greater fame as a broadcaster in the broadcast wing of the Hall of Fame. One of the few athletes to, well, there have been a lot of athletes that have gone from playing field into broadcasting, but he went from sports into news. He was on the Today Show with 
few downs and Barbara Walters for a long time and, and a great success and then of course generation of fans watching him and Kurt Gowdy and Tony Kubek on the NBC game of the week and we, and we saw him few, about what 2011 when we played down here against Arizona we ran into him in the hallway yeah. to have a whole <laughs> big wall dedicated to his career and his accomplishments passed away six months after his dear friend and fellow St. Louis native Yogi Berra passed away and also sadly passing away today Ken Howard those of you remember a terrific TV show called the white shadow wonderful show set in inner city Chicago about an amalgam I mean it was a real melting pot of kids in the ghetto high school white black Italian Jewish, Hispanic, it was great. Great show. Ken Howard was the SAG after president as well. Uh, he'll be sorely missed. Full count to Aoki. Two outs, nobody on. A 9 7 athletics lead. And holding on to that foul tip is Fegley. Mariners are gone one, two, three in the third at the hands of Angel Castro. Three complete here in Peoria. Nine, seven athletics. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. Guys. Park. Some great hiking trails, and I'm told right over the L and Delta, there's a terrific golf club called the 500 Club. Make a call, Mike. Make it happen. 500 Club, huh? Good luck at. Boy, I tell you what, here's an old reference for you, old timers. After remember, Cimarron City was a TV show, and it, it featured that cactus like that. I can remember that as a kid, because all we had was westerns back in the day. <laughs> But I remember that. Cimarron City. Everybody had the day off yesterday. What shoot? I like the. F I was reasonably happy with the 46 on the uh, on the front. Reasonably happy. First time out. I had an unmentionable on the back. Now, but it was into the wind. But nonetheless, a good time had by all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did a fill. I had a nice little 60 degree pop that sucker up over a over a. Over beats there and, and landed right near the cup. I was happy with that. Nice. So I'll take it. Been hitting it pretty good down here, right? Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Yesterday was a little bit different. You mentioned the wind. We've been talking about the wind all night. A little bit tougher conditions for the golfers yesterday. So Nuno walks Coglin on four pitches. Nuno on the relief of Nathan Carnes, who didn't have it tonight. Two and a third, eight hits, nine runs, eight earned, two walks, four strikeouts. Seventh appearance for Nuno. 
you get into these conditions and the, we talked about the pitchers trying to be careful and that's the reason why they've seen so many hitters counts but walks and errors they usually score we've had four walks in the game all of them have scored the one error by Marte at the stop at the start of the third he ended up coming around to score What do you figure? Next year at this time, we already, well, right now we get a 30 second visit for coaches. Mm -hmm. I think they'll put like a 15 on catchers. If it, if it gets, say, if things get out of hand this year, if catchers start abusing it. Could you see yeah, that? I, I could. Yeah, I could see that. Sure. Big hack by Chris Davis. He's one for two with an RBI. I mean, why not if you're trying to you know, keep the, the pace of play move, moving along, boys, moving along? What if you just put a limit on how many times they can go to the mound? I could live with that. Yeah. All right. A or B is well, acceptable. We, yeah, cause, <laughs> because the thing that we see, especially as you get deeper in the game, so many times you'll look at the manager and he will tell the catcher to go out there, and all they're trying to do is buy time for whatever reliever is getting loose. 1-1 one, one pitch. Ball and two strikes, the power hitter, Chris Davis. I would say as a lefty reliever, Nuno's got this ball club made. Big question is, at what point does Charlie Furbush come back? Doesn't look like it's going to happen for opening day. And Mike Montgomery, after when he walked the first hitter the other day against the Dodgers and then pitched pretty well. And who's going to be that second lefty? Well, in that bullpen? He, he did, but he also Scott Service was talking about it, and he brought him in to get the one left-handed hitter out, and he ended up walking him. So yeah. that's something that he did want to see, even though he was able to get out of the inning and he did pitch well. Yeah, walked him on a 3-1 uh, count, and then went fly ball and a, and a strikeout to end the inning. Come on. So Chris Davis is rung up, called third strike. Nuno with his first strikeout. And we'll take a look at it. Ineta set up inside, but he catches the outside corner. We we're talking about it a couple of days ago, Dave, um, with Charlie and his situation. I made the comments that if he normally in spring is going to get seven, eight, nine appearances in spring, and we're down to ten games. I don't. I don't think you should would even try no. to to rush him along. No, that that's the last thing they want to do yeah. right now. If you can get him late April, early May, and get him back healthy, take it. Yeah. Most important thing is when you get him back that he's with you the rest of the way. He's so important to their bullpen. Mark Canna strikeout reached on an error six by Marte and scored. Nunez got him on two. Nunez, 28 years old, out of National City, California. One and four last year with the Mariners. Way upstairs, one and two. Pete Harnish, 14-year career, Cincy, Mets, Baltimore and Houston, Mel Stonemeyer Jr. Scott Service on your right. Harnish and Service teammates and also we detailed a while ago. Big brawl in New York years ago, but they laugh about it now. And now they were good friends before that. They had the big brawl then, and then they became good friends afterwards. But it's amazing how that, that stuff can happen <laughs> in baseball. It doesn't always work that way. Correct. On John Franco Day at Chase Stadium. Bill Hasselman, Mike Messina. They ever make up? I'm gonna. I'm, I'm guessing no. Teacher, I, teacher. Yeah, that, that's my answer. Teacher, teacher. I don't know for sure, but I don't think so. They will not be invited to the same old timers day. 
Billy Butler. Double to right center, drove in a run. of attention to Coughlin. Nuno typically likes to work fast. Doesn't throw over to first as often as he has in this one. So I'm thinking that's coming from the dugout. They're telling him to do it. Coughlin with 11 steals last year with the Cubs caught twice. One for two night for Billy Butler. He's getting his work in. Working on his move. Oh, man. One out to Butler in the dirt. Be on radio tomorrow against Colorado over the Talking Stick. Back on TV on Friday against the White Sox here in Peoria. 2-0 pitch. Off the label. Going back is Marte. Plenty of range. Makes the play, and then he'll do it. Finally. The A's are shut out in an inning. 9-7 Oakland. Mariner Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines. Nine seven lead for the athletics and a reminder hey fans if you're still looking for tickets to the Mariners home opener then visit Mariners.com slash opening night you're going to find information on how you can guarantee your seat by purchasing a 10 game flex pack or 20 game plan check it out today at Mariners.com slash opening night sunset from Tempe Arizona home of the the Arizona State University, the Sun Devils. And here at the Peoria Stadium at the Sports Complex, Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, and the Rich Sports crew with you. And good to be on all the good folks around the country on MLB Network tonight. 9-7 Athletics. Both starters got roughed up mightily as we look at veteran Liam Hendricks. Hendricks out of Perth, Australia. Makes his home in Marmion, Australia. He's got Cattell Marte, and there's a strike. Marte, Seeger, and Lind 
two, three, four for the Mariners. They're in a fourth inning. Marte, one for one. He's also walked and scored a couple of runs. What are you seeing hitting wise from him? I, I think left handed, he, he looks really good. We really, I haven't seen him swing from the right side just a couple of times. I think in the game that I saw, which was probably about a week ago, he picked up a base hit right handed. But left handed, I like his swing. I think it's starting to come around for him. I really like the base hit he had tonight. It was a fastball that was probably middle in. Inside out swing was able to get the barrel to it. Slicing line drive right by the pitcher. Two and two the count. Hendricks with Toronto last year. Spent a 14 season with Toronto and Kansas City. And prior to that, he spent three years with Minnesota. Two two pitch. So full count. On deck is Kyle Seeger. Athletics two runs in the first three in the second, four in the third. Mariners three in the first, four in the second. High fly ball. Short left field. Chris Davis, easy play, one out. Elson Cruz, Robinson Cano getting tonight off. Monday's action, Cano got a two run first inning single. Cruz had a three run homer in the sixth, his second of the spring. Here's Seeger, one for two. Base hit to left, drove in a run, scored. That four run second frame. Another pop up. Here comes Davis. Calling off Simeon, two down. Well, the wind's blowing up, uh, blowing out to right. Mike, I'd like to see you with your driver right now, pegging the ground, and see how far you could hit it. I think with the wind, I mean, you hit it good. With the wind? Give me an extra long tee. All right, done. Tee it up as high as done. you can tee it up and let <laughs> the wind just take it for as long as it wants to go. Cleared batter's eye with ease. Wouldn't even need your driver. Not even close to needing a driver. Actually, a little bit surprised. We've only seen the one home run so far. Yeah, right. And it went to left field. Yeah. Adam Lynn to strike out, walk and run, score. The A's have put the shift on all three times that he's walked up to the plate. There you can see the defense. Center fielder shading toward right center. <laughs> right to the first baseman, Butler. Hendricks has an easy one, two, three inning. Two pop ups and an easy ground out. All right. Keep it scored the ball game. I like it. 9 7 Athletics. Mariners Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines.
Hey, where are you watching today's game? Show us by sharing photos of you and your friends cheering on your team. Use the hashtag where I root on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and you could be featured on our air. That is a lot of hashtags right there. Hi, everyone. Angie Mantink here along with Bill Kruger as the Mariners and the A's continue to battle down in Peoria. And this one is a battle. Two AL West teams tonight. Of course, the Mariners are going to open up their season against the Texas Rangers. So the idea a lot of times in the spring is that starters in your five-man rotation will not face these AL West teams. Do you like this idea as a pitcher? Well, I think it's it, it's it's good gamesmanship, particularly with, with guys like Iwakuma and Hernandez have been around the division a long time. They know what they're doing. They know how to get ready. They know the other team pretty well already. So why overexpose them when you're going to be playing these teams 19 times? We're talking about the Angels, the Rangers, the A's. On the other side of things, you might want to give O'Malley a chance to see some of these lineups because maybe he hasn't pitched a ton against them. And certainly with Carnes and Paxson, they're, they're in the fight. So uh, they have to prove themselves in the uh, main field, I think, for the most part, to earn their fifth spot. And Walker, uh, you know, probably falls a little bit more in the boat with, uh, with Iwakuma and Hernandez having pitched quite a bit against that league last year. So, All right, uh, Mike, I understand that, you know, guys like Kuma and Felix, like Bill's talking about, have been in the league a long time. But at the same time, a lot of the players on these AL West teams, the A's, the Angels, uh, you know, the Houston Astros, everybody, you know, they got a lot of new players that you have to figure out how to get out as well, right? Well, you, you do, Angie, but I, I think that as far as a hitter goes, the more that you can see a pitcher, uh, the more the advantage will start to swing towards that hitter. And in the spring training, and Bill can speak to this too, if I'm facing Bill, he may not pitch me the way that he's going to pitch me during sure. the season. Because one day yeah. he may be working on a, on, a, on a breaking ball or his changeup or whatever, and I'll see a little bit more. But for me as a hitter, I get a chance to see his arm slot. I get a chance to try to pick the ball up a little bit earlier. I see the way that his fastball runs. I get a chance to look at that breaking ball. If he has a good one that day, I can put that information in there. And, and remember those things. They're not having scouting reports before these games down here. So the guys are trying to work on things, throw strikes. But um, the, I, I just always felt that I was more comfortable the more that I was able to see a pitcher. And I think that's the reason why you see them hold some guys back. Yeah, Mike, I, I, I totally agree with you. I wish I was smart enough to be that coy uh, and uh, show you none of my tricks and then, you know, flip it on you when I faced you for real. I wasn't that bright. Uh, and I was uh, digging, digging hard to get everybody out so that uh, they'd want to pitch me when the real game starts. So uh, everybody's a little bit different. I think there right. is a little bit of that uh, hitters are trying to figure it out. You know, the, the nightmare for, for pitchers that have been around is when you get into these games and the guys with the numbers above 50 are up swinging at the first pitch. And you know that's not going to play when you get into real games. The real hitters are not going to do that. They're going to try to get counts and do the right thing. So that's really, I think, the challenge above and beyond conditions for a for pitcher a that's been pitcher. around a while. Yeah. Gotcha. That's, uh, you know, I completely agree with everything that uh, you guys are saying. Does it ever happen, though, um, where, say, you know, th if there's a downside for a hitter if he does face a guy, particularly if he cannot find a way to touch him? So that pitcher just continues to own him over and over and over again, and he just never finds that success. You're thinking... <laughs> I don't want to face this guy in the regular season either. I can't, I can't touch him in the spring. I can't touch him anywhere. I, I, David Cohn could tell me what he was going to throw me, and I could not put him in play, and it didn't matter where, when, how. It just wasn't going to happen. So you're right, Angie. There are certain guys that you're just never going to be comfortable with or be able to pick the baseball up like you'd want to. But maybe if there's somebody that you have a few at-bats against, if you can get four down here in the spring and you get a chance to see him a little bit maybe you can pick something up and I think that's what the concern is for most managers and the reason why they want to hold the guys back but look there's some times where you really have no chance you know it's funny I was just thinking of uh, some of the great players I played with and one that strikes my mind is Kirby Puckett and Kirby hit everybody I mean he was swinging you know from the from the get-go but anybody that dropped arm angle on him I mean, he just couldn't touch, and it was it became hilarious. He almost was coming up with he'd move his socks up, he changed, you know, <laughs> batting gloves and bats, and you know, it, nothing worked. It was almost laughable. Anybody that that dropped angles, submarine guys, he just couldn't do anything with them.
Uh, well, they, that's a good point. That's a great point because I remember with Edgar, I was one just of the greatest say, hitters I've ever yep. been around. If you could throw a knuckleball, Edgar was going to have a, a tough time with that. He didn't like it, didn't want to see it, any part of it. Uh, and, he, and this is one of the best hitters that I, I've ever seen. It's just, it's just funny how sometimes things will work like that. A couple yep. of great hitters, but there is that one thing that maybe they don't like. I know, but how many times have you guys heard uh, from different guys, all pitchers around the league, that it was the one guy they didn't want to face was Edgar Martinez? All the time. You could, you could watch managers try to figure things out and what they were going to do, but I can tell you late in games, uh, they did not want to see him walk up to the plate. I don't care how good their bullpen was, what other options they had, they did not want to see Edgar up there. Guy next to him wasn't bad either. <laughs> no, he, he, could, he could kick a field goal in a hurry. He'll hit a three-run homer <laughs> on you before you know what happens. You think the clubhouse guys are just happy that they don't have to get that pine tar out of the pants anymore? <laughs> 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 he would come down to spring training and he'd put it on his pants, even when he was, like, coaching and helping out. I'm like, what are you <laughs> – you're killing him. Yeah, yeah, well, he didn't have to worry about it. He wasn't a pitcher, and, and he had to have it on there to throw the baseball so I don't think he worried about it too much that's for sure <laughs> well I, I spent a little time as a Mariner but a lot of time facing the Mariners and I saw those those stretch of guys quite a bit and I can concur that Edgar was uh, he was uh, there was a lot of science and and you had to be really good to get him out um, certainly Griffey and Buhner were no were no slouch and Tino Martinez was a fabulous hitter as well so it was a tall challenge no question about it and Jay, you know, Jay struck out a bunch, but he was really good RBI guy. He was a really good RBI guy. And I think when you get around the league, Mike, and you know this, there are guys that get big, the guys that, that drive the ball and put up numbers. But inside the game, we kind of know the guys that drive in runs that yeah. really matter. You know, one of the things that was great about Jay, and, and it's something that I talked to him about quite a bit when we were teammates, is typically for him, you have a couple of outs, and if those runners are in scoring position, and you mentioned him striking out. I, I think that he would take chances a lot more because that was part of his job. But he could cut his swing down and hit a line drive into right to pick up that tough run when you needed him to. And, uh, look, you, you know, yeah, he could go out and hit 40 home runs for you, but he also drove in 130, 140. You're not going to do all of that with, with just the long ball. You have to be smart, and you have to understand what's going on in the game, especially late. Yeah, and I'm a bit of a nerd, and so I was always impressed with Jay, uh, the pride he took in his defense and his arm, because there's a lot of guys um, that didn't take as much pride in, it, you know, working on their defense and becoming a much better outfielder with his angles and his arm. I mean, he just had a fantastically accurate arm. And it's, you're right, Angie, it's because he worked at it all the time. I can remember, <laughs> and I don't know how many games he played right field in the kingdom with that high wall and the different way the ball would bounce off it, but he'd be out there all the time. We still see Rusty Koontz um, with the Royals from time to time. He was the outfield coach that had Jay way, way back in the day, and he would still work on it all the time during batting practice. Rusty would go out there and hit the ball off the wall, different angles and things, just so Jay, that you, you could probably remember this, Angie, sometimes a fly ball would be over his head, and he would look like he was going to catch the ball. You couldn't really mm -hmm. tell in the last second. He would turn around and, and catch it quickly off the wall and throw the guy out at second because they, they assumed that maybe they were out or hold them to a single. Uh, yep. And it's just, that just comes from a lot of work. It was a lot of experience, and, and uh, he, he just made it look easy out there, too. I mean, you're talking about an effort. You just see those guys. I call them, uh, they have like a forearms of thunder. You know, Ichiro <laughs> had it as well. It's just like they just make it look so easy, and their arm slots just so nice and free. Well, you know, and what's great about it, Angie, is we're down here in spring training, and we've seen a number of the guys come during the camp and, and, and help the younger guys. He, he helps out a lot of the minor league guys, and the things that he can tell them because of his experience is, is invaluable to him. And, and, and he might tell them three or four things, and maybe they only pick up one, but at some point they're going to be in a game, and something's going to happen, and they'll remember what that man was talking to him about. And that, that's the reason why when you get him down here with the guys that are 18, 19, 20 years old, uh, and you can bring somebody like Jay in. We had Jamie Moyer in earlier, uh, Julio Cruz we've talked about. That's a lot of information from guys that had a lot of success, and I, I think if, if you can just sit and listen to what they have to say, you will pick things up. And it may not work for you 
the first day out, but eventually it'll start to click and you'll understand what they're talking about. We've talked, uh, Dave uh, Sims, a lot about controlling the zone and a lot of the different uh, mindsets and mantras that this organization has had. It's been interesting to see how uh, they have bringing a ba a back a lot of uh, the uh, former players and bring them back into the fold and making sure they tap in to their knowledge. Well, you'd have to be crazy not to want to tap into that. I mean, the success that these guys had and, you know, young kids, some of these young kids are, are just hungry for knowledge and, and they, they appreciate the fact that these guys have come back. And you got to remember, too, a lot of these kids played with these guys in their video games. So it's got to be pretty cool <laughs> to be you know, pretty be, pretty cool to have Edgar Martin. Wait a minute. You won me a game one time against my brother. And here it is. You're talking to the real guy, the real thing. <laughs> I think it was interesting. You mentioned it the other day when Junior was in camp and, and the kids. It, it takes them a day just to get used to having him around because they're in awe of watching him. And, and although he's here having fun and, and, and trying to help them out and, and teach them some things, I think a lot of it goes over the top of their head right away because they're just in awe that they're standing right there in front of them. Johnny Bench was your guy, right? If you, yeah. if, when, you when you saw him, when did, when did you run into him as a player? Or was oh. it after your? your no, I, I saw him in Cincinnati when I was with the Dodgers, okay. and, and I was just happy just to to one just be standing in, in the neighborhood of him, but to get a chance to shake his hand and just say hello was was great. You mentioned, oh, Joe Gar so you mentioned Joe Gargiola, and, and it was that one game a week, and back then the Reds, when I was a kid. Were, were one of the best teams, so they were on TV oh, quite a bit the all the time, and that's the reason why I ended up being a fan of the Reds. Eric Sogard, a walk and a foul out to the first baseman, Adam Lind. Benoit trying to get out of a one-out, two-on situation. <laughs> Popped up, playable. Who's taking charge? Lind will take it. Fair territory. So he's fouled out to Lind and popped up to Lind. That's two outs. For Benoit, this is his fourth game here in the spring. Six and five last year with the Padres in 67 outings. Two saves, a 2-3-4 ERA as a setup guy. Veteran guy, been around, knows what he's doing. Top of the order, Marcus Simeon. Two for three, two runs scored and a run batted in. It's a heavy 93 he's throwing, isn't it? You can hear it up here. Right? Yeah. Better have a good grip on that bat. Two no. When you were with the Yankees, did he get a chance to meet number seven? I Mick? did. Yeah. It's great. Your That's eyes, did your eyes sort of like pop? Oh, yeah. Oh, why, yeah, how could it not? Exactly. Are you kidding me? That's Mickey. Frick. All these guys <laughs> that, that were kids and fans of the game and, you know. Two and one. What do you remember about that first time meeting number seven? I didn't say a word. <laughs> he was having conversation with, with a couple of other guys, and I did not say a word, but I, I stood right there and listened to it. You got mental pictures burned into your uh, mind. Yeah. Two and one. I remember I, on my, I had a show, uh, Sports Night on MSG Network, and I said, hey, we got Mickey Mantle this week. I was like, get out of here. So we promoted all week, and the same thing happened with Mays. We had all these guys my age and older. Showed up with their kids and went in the old Hall of Fame club at the Garden. Oh, gotcha. And I have number seven, Mickey Mantle. The guys are crying. I mean, <laughs> it was like, oh, my God, there's the Mick. <laughs> two and two. It was really good. Good to see you, Dave. 
He had a great sense of humor. And, and like many baseball players, tremendous recall. Games that it was in. A lot of fun. Three and two, two out, two on. Runners go, swing and a miss. Joaquin Benoit pitches out of trouble. Strands two in the Athletics fifth. 9-7, Oakland Mariners Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines. Second meeting in six days, these two ball clubs, another high scoring affair. Make sure to take advantage of the Mariners special on Safe Go Field Suites going on right now. When you pay in full for two or more suites by April 1st, you'll receive a free private suite for a game in April. Visit Mariners.com slash premium for more information on this sweet deal. Some restrictions do apply. Wonderful sunsets. Here in Arizona, where the Mariners have a 10, 11, and 2 record, the A's are 9, 9, and 3. New pitcher, Eric Surkamp. The hitter is Chris Iannetta, and he's had a fine night. Two run double, a two run single, and a run scored. You're talking about meeting heroes. And, you know, that sometimes it, I, I think it was, uh, let's see, I was about three, four years out of co college and met uh, Muhammad Ali. And that's where I got a case of the Abu Dhabi. It's like, how, 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 one of those kind of things. I can imagine. I mean, it was Muhammad Ali. I was in my first instructional league, my first year of pro ball. And it's kind of like a spring training. They're trying to teach all the young kids. We were in West Palm Beach, Florida. Look at I had a three for three. Yeah, he feels pretty good today. But there were a number of teams that shared the complex, and right. I remember going to the backfield for some extra batting practice and sitting behind the backstop mm -hmm. in his chair watching the Braves have an inner squad game. Right. It was Hank Aaron. The hammer. That's cool. It was very cool. Yeah, and I can remember one of my teammates asking me, he goes, you know, we, we should we should go up and ask him for an autograph. I said, I'm not asking him for anything. He just stand there, he just wants to stand there and look at him. Yeah, right? yeah, that was that was great. <laughs> Hank Aaron. I was told to catch this and I'll pass this along to you and everybody else. I think the Smithsonian channel did. And I, I, I happened to accidentally run into it about ten minutes of it. Uh, an in depth look. At Hank Aaron's career, How, uh, Harold Bryant, who's a really good sports writer for ESPN out of Boston, did a bio on, on uh, Mr. Aaron, which I read and I still have to finish. But they had all kinds of interviews. This is one of his classic documentaries, sort of like what Ken Burns does. 
and you got to just be on the lookout for it. See if you can catch it. Maybe you can. We'll get it ordered or something. But it was fascinating, and it talked about, you know, all the struggles he went through as he moved closer to the Ruth record, and the, how bad the pressure was, and and just, you know, there's a there's a core, there's a part of this country that, you know, where, where the racism came out a hundredfold, and he, and yet he had to deal with, you know, going out there and performing every day right. with that pressure, you know, chasing Ruth's record. Check that out, and he saved a lot of those those letters and whatnot. Kept the, if I remember correctly, helped to keep him grounded. I'll tell you what. What is remarkable is look at the consistency of his career oh. year after year after year. He didn't have the 50 home run season, but you could put 30 on the board every oh, single year. Oh, it was relentless! Absolutely relentless. And Jackie Robinson piece coming out by Ken Burns who not many people do documentaries better than he does it's a four hour look at Jackie Robinson's life April 11 12 at, at debuts on PBS Seth Smith like I and had a fine night Ooh, breaking ball it didn't have any snap Smitty, a RBI triple and an RBI single. Mariners threaten now with a couple men aboard. Here's James Paxton signing some autographs. Minor league outing yesterday. He had a good day. Let's see if he can build off of that. Battling for the fifth spot in a rotation. As you can see, he's down 20 pounds. Looks terrific. Been battling Nathan Carnes. Carnes, if you're just joining us, struggled mightily tonight. Two and a third, eight hits, nine runs, eight earned runs, two walks, and four strikeouts. Both walks came around and scored. This is Day Ho Lee. Good to see him out there. Pinch hitting for Clevenger. Three hundred thirty two home runs in Japan and Korea for coming over here trying to make this ball club. Day Ho Lee 267 on the spring eight for 30 a homer four runs batted in. he's got a couple of doubles he's made three three or four very nice plays at first base as well. Got a 2 0 count. Big man, about 260 pounds. That's some swing. He, he tried to do some damage. Missed the fastball. Two men on, nobody out. Three and one, wind still blowing out to right field, and hard. We've yet to have a home run hit out that way. One home run that was hit by Smolensky, a three-run shot over the onto the berm over the 385 side in left center field. Three-one. Lee drives it, but foul. He was listening to you. Yes, sir. Three and two. Give me some of that right field wind. <laughs> It's been like that all night. Three two pitch. Again, right field. That will get out of sight and it goes foul. Matter of fact, let's see. When we saw the A's last time last week, it was Rob Brantley hit a high fly ball right field, and looked like it was gonna it was gonna hook foul, and it got the top of the foul pole for a home run.
Lee representing the go-ahead run at the plate. Ionetta at second, three for three. Seth Smith at first, he's two for two. And the bases are loaded. Kurt Young, pitching coach for the A's, making a trip out to the mound. Tough night for the pitchers. This inning, you have a base hit, a hit batter, and a walk. Kurt, pretty good left hand pitcher in his day. Used up all but five seconds of his 30 seconds on the clock out there. It's almost like a game show. Can the pitching coach get out there in 30 seconds and get his message across to his distraught pitcher? 30 seconds. Start the clock now. Sardinius, switch hitter. Batting ready against Sir Camp. Looks at a strike. He's twice bounced out to short. I don't think we've seen anybody this spring get past the 30 seconds, have we? Mel Stonemeyer Jr. has been outstanding. He's been yeah. in and out in 12 to 15 seconds. Teammate, I think if that doesn't cement it, nothing does. <laughs> A grand slam. Luis Sardinius, his second spring home run. Takes his RBI total to 14. He has done everything you could possibly do to try to make a club. The switch hitter hitting right-handed for the first time tonight. A grand slam. Hmm. Impressive. Lanny Martin looks at a strike. What did he barrel that one? That's it. Oh, what a play by Billy Butler. Look what I found. One out. Looked like a hockey goalie. You can't hit it any harder than Martin. Pretty casual about it. Nice play. Mm. Yeah, hit it all the way. <laughs> you can laugh about it now. Yeah. <laughs> Aoki, the hitter. Two for three with a strikeout. Aoki, high fly ball, deep right center field, going to stay in the yard. Right fielder Smolinski makes the play for out number two. Hey, Chris Taylor, who came in the game last inning. It's his first plate appearance. Sardinius, a lot to feel good about. No question about that home run up on the pavilion. Taylor hitting a 212, 7 for 33. Sardinius having a wonderful, wonderful spring. Swing and a miss. Sardinius with that hit, his 17th hit. That's a club lead. Oh, and two to Taylor. Two out, nobody on.
Taylor trying to make this ball club as a utility guy. Clear leader in that horse race right now is Luis Sardinius. 0-2. Swing and a miss. He's gone. So are the Mariners in the fourth, but what a highlight. Salami with your Sardinus. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. The Mariners take on the White Sox. Seattle Mariners baseball here at Root Sports being brought to you by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Good look at the Peoria Sports Complex parking lot as it filled up at sundown here before tonight's ball game. Mariners lead it 11-9. All kinds of fireworks. These two teams met six days ago over in Mesa, an 11-11 tie. Here we are, 11-9, top of the six. Good to have you with us in these youngsters out on the berm. Good crowd on hand, Dave Sims, Mike Blowers, and Orange Sports Crew. Very pleasant night, but very windy. And happy birthday to the man who just takes over on the mound. 40 years young today, Joel Peralta. Fourth pitcher for the Mariners tonight. Long foul ball off the bat of Coglin. Coglin, Davis, and Canna, 2 3 4 coming up here for the Athletics. Coglin, good night. First inning, single to right, run scored, two runs, single to left in the second, walked in the fourth. Peralta, well traveled veteran, Angels, Kansas City, Colorado, Washington, Tampa Bay, and the Dodgers. Curveball wasn't working real well for him a few games ago. That was against the Giants at the Giants. He's figured a few things out. Try not to fly open. He was really mad, angry with himself. That game against the Giants, that pitch up and in, two and one. Well, he was able to get a strike with his fastball, but a couple of off-speed pitches, both of them up out of the strike zone. Yeah, this game March 11th at the at the Giants. Two-one. He's back even. 11 runs, 10 hits, two errors for the Mariners. Nine runs, 10 hits, one error. Or the athletics. Okay. 
earlier we were talking about the excellence of Mr. Henry Aaron. You go to his page on baseball reference. There's a lot of black numbers <laughs> all over that page. <laughs> and you're talking about home runs. I mean, the consistency is just phenomenal. I didn't really get a chance to see him until he was late in his career. It's a shift, base hit. But from what I understand, at one point he, he was a pretty good outfielder. He was a real good outfielder. Yeah. Uh, during his time, uh, that I, uh, well, the time I remember from, you know, in the 60s, great right fielders in the uh, National League, Clemente, Frank Robinson, Henry Aaron. He could play with them. Oh, that goes with Griffey can play in any age. Yeah. No question. Tuesday when he he was here when Junior was here Rick Rick Riz and I had an absolute blast as he stayed with us the entire time that's a foul ball must have covered a hundred topics and you know you're busting a gut laughing on 98 of them oh yeah <laughs> you know, my man was on fire <laughs> Speaking of what, he tells a story about, I, I forget how it came up, but he said, I think Rick asked him something about, you know, well, what was it like when you were a kid? He says, well, one time I caught, I, I set myself on fire. I said, what? It was during the time when Evil Knievel was jumping through hoops, so we figured we'd do <laughs> one of them bad boys, and it didn't work. And he said, his mother came back. His mother was, uh, was making a trip or something. All of a sudden, it's Mrs. Griffey, red courtesy phone. And he said, uh-oh. <laughs> I was talking to him. He said that I think he said his handicap is around a three or a four now. Oh, he's killing it. He said he out he outdrives Bubba. He can outdrive Bubba Watson. High pop, shallow left field. Aoki makes the play. One out, one on, sixth inning. Junior said he has not written his speech yet. <laughs> a couple of his buddies, and you always have wise guys, right, in your, in your circle of friends. So one guy said, well, we'll start out with a lyric from Prince and follow it, follow, what was the other, follow up with another one, another lyric from, I, want, I think he said Rick James. And Junior, Junior put the kibosh on that. He said, no, nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> I enjoyed asking him about. I said, "Listen, you've always in your your in your strata, you have many of the guys that we idolize on speed dial. Hank, Willie, Frank, everybody." Right. So I said, "What'd you hear from w Willie?" Well, he said, "Picked up the phone and Junior went to say something. Willie just said, shut up, listen.' <laughs> and that's what he did. Oh, off the glove of a diving Kyle Seeger, base hit, runners at first and second." Can I hit that hard? Now yeah, low fastball down and in, right off the end of the glove. So we'll see. We're talking about Ken Griffey Jr. We'll see him on opening day. I'll throw out the first pitch. Hall of Fame induction, uniform number, retirement, all coming up this summer. Here's Butler. One for three. Hard hit double right center field. Peralta could use the double plays. Got Sardinius at short, Taylor at second, Seeger at third, and Lind at first. Keeps him in the game, doesn't it? When he when he's got that thing snapping off, he he, he doesn't throw as hard as he used to. His fastball, 
but he can pitch off the corners, and as you mentioned, he throw a lot of breaking balls. His changeup is really good. Knows how to pitch. The south side, two and one. The injuries in the bullpen certainly helped his uh, possibilities of making this ball club. I think they're pretty strong right oh, now. I think he has a real good chance to make this club. Missed upstairs, three and one. Cook and Scribner going down. Charlie Furbush, you know, questionable for a while. Andrew Lambeau on deck. Cishek, Benoit, and Zick are the only gimmies in that bullpen right now, right? I, I think I think Nuno's okay. I think Nuno, Nuno's that's four. There. Yeah. So you got a lot of guys for three spots. Sixth inning. And Joel Peralta trying to get out of the jam here. Runners take off. Pitch high drive. Deep left center field. Aoki going back. It's standing in the yard. And he got it out of here. He overran it. Bounced off the track. Is that what it was? Yeah. The wind ended up again. We talked about it going to right. He went to where he thought the ball was going to come down, and you can see the wind blow it back. He had to run a long way. You can see how shallow he was playing. And right there, he thought he had a beat on it. And there, or it's the wind too late. Took the wind it. took oh. it. Yep, and bounced off the track. So a double. Run scores 11 10. Second RBI for Butler. Moving to third is Canna. So Lambo, one for three. Good block by catcher Ian Nettup. Coughlin's driven in two RBIs for Simeon and Davis. Billy Butler's driven in two. Smolinski three. Second and third. Tying and go ahead runs are aboard. Two and oh. Needs an out. 2 0. -oh. 3 0 -oh to Lambeau. Josh Fegley on deck. So far, Joel on his birthday has given up a run on three hits. Two runners out there. Bruce Maxwell's on deck, new catcher. Walked him four pitches. Bases are loaded. Bell Stottlemyre going to make a trip out to the mound. We're talking about the starting pitchers tonight in Carnes. And Han and both of them throwing a lot of pitches. Well, the relievers are doing the same thing tonight. 21 pitches so far for Peralta. Benoit threw a number of pitches.
Not a, not a pitcher's night. The berm is thinning out. Wind probably. Yeah. <laughs> They've had enough. So Bruce Maxwell, a 260, make that a 286 hitter this spring. One homer, two runs batted in. Bases loaded, one out. Mariners by a run. Ball one. Right now Peralta will give back half his birthday cake for a double play. His 40th birthday today. With the breaking ball, 2 0. Oh. It's his money pitch, and he's not controlling it tonight. Not a lot of bite to it. Nope. Two zero. Oh. Three and 0. Oh. Casey Coleman getting ready in a hurry. <laughs> this the sixth hitter that Peralta's facing. He needs a strike. Didn't get it. Walked in a run. Tied ball game. And Eleven apiece. <laughs> Canna scores. Everybody else moves up. Butler to third. Lambeau to second. And that's going to do it for Joel Peralta. Here comes Scott Service. Same score we had six days ago. Only this time we're in the sixth. Coleman will take over. Eleven eleven ball game here in the sixth, and this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Another oldie but goodie. Oh, I don't know. I was about 1959, 1960. Bobby Rydell, wild one. That's what this is, 11-11. They're staying busy. Oh, keep away. Yep. <laughs> Casey Coleman takes over now. Yeah, breaking ball. Fouled off by Smolinski.
Jake with a walk and run scored in the second, three run homer in the third, a strikeout in the fifth. A one. He did go. So, 0 oh and 2. Casey Coleman's granddad, Joe Coleman. 223 big league games from 1942 to 1955 with the Philadelphia A's, Baltimore, and Detroit. It's an all star for the A's in 1948. His father, Joe, won 142 games. I remember him, 1965 to 1979. Largely with Detroit, he was an all star in 72 for the Tigers. Here's the 1 2. Pretty fine baseball heritage there. The bases are loaded. Billy Butler, he's at third. Andrew Lambeau at second. Bruce Maxwell at first. Smolenski, the seventh man to bat here in the sixth inning. Oh, I never thought he had one. Two and two. Coleman out of Fort Myers, Florida. Foul ball. After starting him off with three sliders, he has him set up for the fastball. I think that's why Annetta really wanted that pitch. It looked like it was at the knee, certainly on the plate. Didn't get the call. Might go back to the slider now. 2-2 two -two pitch. He Outside. Did. Full count, bases loaded, one out, two runs in, tie ball game. Coleman with AAA Omaha, Kansas City system last year, five and four record, a 4.92 ERA. It's been part of three seasons early in his career with the Cubs. 3 2 pitch. Walked him in. Three walks in a row. Oh, my goodness. Scoring is Butler. RBI for Smolinski, his fourth of the night. And he'll bring up Sogard. They run out of guys in the pen, maybe to have some volunteers here. Still only one out. 12 11. Oh, boy, that's trouble. A little dunk shot. That'll move everybody up 90 feet. Another run on the board for the Athletics. The RBI for Sogard, his third of the spring. He hit it right off the end of the bat. Running fastball, probably off the plate away. Second time. The Athletics have put a four spot up on the board. Mariners have done it twice. Top of the order, Simeon. He's the ninth player, ninth batter to the plate. Chris Davis for the A's, the only Athletic that hasn't scored tonight. Here's the 1 0. 2 0. So sort of like that game in the ninth inning when the A's uh, relievers, I think, off the top of my head, let me the page back, see if I still have it. They walked in three in that, that inning. Mariners put up a nine spot. A little late. Two and one to Marcus Simeon. Bases loaded, one out. Yeah. 
What a crazy ball game. Simeon, 3-1 pitch. I'm back. Strange in this game sometimes how it works like that. Every pitcher just struggling. Oh. For the Mariners, the only one that didn't was Nuno tonight. Everybody else had to throw a lot of pitches and struggling with commanding the strike zone. I told you about that 11-11 game back on Thursday, yeah. March 17th. Mariners in the ninth inning sent 14 batters to the plate. And there were one, two, three bases loaded walks. <laughs> Time of game, three hours and 20 minutes. How many how many relievers were used? <laughs> Whoa, nasty pitch. Got him looking. Now Brent's tear goes up here in Peoria, Arizona. Two outs. Well, all fastballs until he got to this pitch. We'll drop down slider right down the middle of the plate. No argument. Tenth man to the plate. Chris Coughlin. He started it off with a base hit to left field. High fly ball deep left center field. Aoki's under it. That'll do it. Four runs, four hits. No errors. They leave them loaded. What a wacky game. 13-11 athletics, bottom six coming up. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. Here at 83rd and Bell, just outside, beyond left field here at the Furious Sports Complex at the stadium. Get that line score. There's Seeger in a high drive, center field. Wind really beat that up. One out, real quick. Athletics. In the top half of this inning, 10 men to the plate, four runs, four hits, left them loaded. Put them back in the lead. Six lead changes in this game already. Here's Lind. See how he does against. Lefty pitcher, career 213 hitter against left hand pitching, 293 career against righties. Adam tonight, a strikeout, walk, run, scored, and a ground out. First base. 0 for 2. You have to wonder 
how much longer Scott Service is going to stay with the regulars. We've got a game tomorrow. Yeah, not just not because but, it's the sixth but, inning, but because of the time of the game. We're already at 10:01. Game started at 7:10. Somebody break out American Legion rules and call it at seven. Not going to happen. I know. <laughs> but you're right. Yeah, but they'll uh, get the regulars out. Big swing and a miss, two down. Get those guys, get them home, get rested up. Cruz and Cano with the night off. Mariners play. Salt River feels a talking stick tomorrow against the Rockies. 110. Have it for you on Mariners Radio. Ionetta, perfect night. Two run double, two run single, and a base hit to left. Three for three, four ribbies, scored twice. Two and one. One of the things that's not uncommon down here in spring training is some of the veteran guys, because it's a night game, whether it's a long game or not, doesn't matter. It's a night game. They'll let, they'll let them come in a little bit later tomorrow. It's a right field long run, and it's out of play. As this spring has moved on, Chris looks like his swing is getting shorter and shorter all the time. He's really been able to slow things down. Had a good night tonight. Full count. Well, he's not jumping at the ball anymore, that's for sure. That was no, his I problem he, last year. Yeah, I think he'll bounce back from that. He, he was pretty honest with you early in spring training when you talked to him about that and just some of the issues that he was having last mm -hmm. year. Time called. You go back and you look at his career, he's always been a high on base guy. Mm -hmm. hey. He's able to check his swing. He's aboard. Fourth time that he has reached base. Walk by Sir Camp is second. Comes with two outs. And a pinch runner coming out. Gianfranco Wawo. Gianfranco, G I A N F R A N C O, Wawo, W A W O E. Good night for Chris. For Seth Smith, he too's had a nice night. RBI triple, RBI single, hit by a pitch and scored. The other part with Chris is. He's had to catch a lot of pitches tonight, and I think he kept every pitch that was in the dirt in front of him tonight. Yes, he did. Yeah, had a good night all the way around. Dale Lee's on deck. Next TV games Friday and Saturday. White Sox here in Peoria, then the Dodgers on Saturday. White Sox Friday, Dodgers Saturday. 110 start time for both of those contests.
Two outs here in the six with a man aboard. Mariners down by two. In tight, that misses. Count runs full. Eric Surkamp, fourth pitcher tonight, used by the Athletics. And they're going to shift on Seth. They put Simeon on the right side. Going to back Sogard out onto the grass a little bit. 3 2 pitch, two outs, runner goes. Solid smash, slicing back to the left fielder who makes the catch, and that'll do it. It's Tyler Marinkov out in left field. 13-11, A's lead. Mariner Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines. Sunset here in the greater Phoenix area. Mariners and BECU, they are partnering once again offer family fun at a discount price at Safe Go Field. Families can purchase select view level seats for one low price. Choose from a lineup this season's BECU Family Nights when you visit Mariners.com. Wild win here, top seven, a 13 11 athletics lead. Casey Coleman continues on here for the Mariners. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow when we come to you from Colorado on radio, Taiwan Walker gets the start. And then Friday back on TV against the White Sox here, the Felix Hernandez. <laughs> okay, Tyler Marinkoff. Quick dismissal, one out. Pretty good fastball from Casey Coleman, right on the inside corner. Rob Brantley now doing the catching for the Mariners. Sean O'Malley at third base. Jesus Montero at first base. Daniel Robertson in left, and Stefan Romero in right. So we thought we'd see a bunch of changes, and we have. Mark Canna, he's the hitter, scored twice tonight. One for four. Coleman oh. dropping down with that arm angle, one and one. Two balls, one strike. Martin shading over towards right center. We have a big gap in between the left fielder Robertson and the center fielder Martin. Romero over in right. These teams have combined for 24 runs, 24 hits, and three errors.
fastball three and two. The pitchers have walked six. Three have scored, and two of the walks were bases loaded walks. Three and two. And there's another free pass. Bring up Billy Butler. And a high fly ball left field bounced off the warning track over the over the fence for a ground rule double in an RBI. That was back in the sixth. Right center field, an RBI double in the third. Two for four, two runs scored. Two runs knocked in. Strike one. Watching Casey Coleman throughout the spring, you mentioned him dropping down. Typically, he'll throw his slider. Most of the time, it will be a breaking ball when you see his arm angle change. Butler to right field. Here comes Romero. Makes the play. Two outs. Two outs here in the seventh. Romero having a really good spring. I think he has a pretty good chance to make this ball club. Play corner outfield, can play first base. I think that's can the play. one thing. They want to see him play some defense at first, and he's made some, some really good plays over there. Good athlete. He's 12 for 28, 429 batting in. Uh, that's the most important thing is he's really been swinging the bat. Homer and seven runs batted in. Andrew Lambeau, one for three with a run scored. He gets out quickly, 0 and 2. I'm trying to put him away. And he does. Good inning. Couple strikeouts. The runner stranded. stranded. We go to the home seventh. Mariners trail 13-11. Back here at the Peoria Sports Complex, a reminder that there are a limited number of tickets remaining to join in the fun and excitement of Mariners opening night on April 8th. Usher in the 2016 season by welcoming home Felix, Robbie, and your favorite Mariners. All you fans will receive a free magnetic schedule courtesy of Safeco Insurance. Visit Mariners.com for more information. 
A wild one, 13-11. These two teams back on the 17th played an 11-11-9 inning tie. And they have surpassed that total here as we play in the home seventh. Deho Lee to lead off. Deho got his first plate appearance in the fifth inning. Walked and scored. Aaron has scored four runs on two hits in that inning. Oh, bullet up the middle. Whoa, quick. <laughs> Almost a clean shave on Sir Camp. Base hit. This is going to be on a breaking ball. They want to get it to the inside corner, and it's right down the middle of the plate. And some big leg kick. What a weight transfer, huh? His, his timing, though, with every day that goes by, his timing gets better and better all the time. He, you, can, you can tell that he's starting to recognize pitches. Well, here's Luis Sardinius. 0-1 pitch, bases loaded last time up. He homered, and a base hit here to left. Here come the Mariners in the seventh. There are two ground outs, the shortstops, first two time out. First two times up, a grand slam, and now base hit. Yeah, they're taking advantage of a couple of breaking balls that are up and in the middle of the plate. There's Leonis Martin looking for his first hit. He had a hard ground ball to Billy Butler at first. Last time up, he's 0 for 3. Wade Kirkland now at second base for the Athletics. Matt McBride, he's at first. But, and a nice play. The runners move up. But an effective bunt by Lenis Martin. That'll bring up Daniel Robertson, who get his first at bat of the day. Sack 5 3. Base hit will tie it up. Robertson took over and left for Nori Aoki. What's his strike? Robertson's been impressive. 454, 13 of 28. No homers. He's driven in eight runs. Daniels also doubled four times and hit two triples. Chopper. That'll get a run in. And nice dig there by McBride as Deho Lee scores to make it a one run game. It's 13 12 RBI for Robertson. Infield playing back, protecting the two run lead. Ends up jamming him a little bit. But he'll pick up an RBI. It's his ninth run batted in. Sardinius with the grand slam earlier in the game. He's got 14 runs batted in, club leader. He's played a lot in the spring. They've really Sardinius, taken a long oh, look at him. Oh, without a doubt. Chris Taylor, 0 for 1, struck out in the fifth. One on one to Chris. Sir Camp delivers ball two down low. Two one pitch coming. 
And that's taken care of by Matt McBride. Mariners get a run, strand another runner. It'll do it as we are through seven. One run game, 13-12 A's. How fast is it? Welcome back to Mariner Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines. We're headed to the eighth inning and the athletes still lead it 13 to 12. Can you believe we've bested the score from just a few days ago between these two teams and we haven't even gotten to the ninth inning. Hi everyone, Angie Mentink here along with Bill Kruger. We're going to get to him on pitching, but I'm going to start down in Peoria with Mike Blowers because I want to talk about controlling the zone when it comes to hitting, you've been down there the most. This has been the focus for this organization going into spring and moving forward. Um, so what do you think about the job? Can you see a difference, the job that guys are doing down there in spring training and that this is the emphasis and it's working? Yeah, I think that you can. I think it actually started before spring training. They had a meeting about it. Um, I also think that you have to look at the type of players that Jerry DePoto brought in here. When you look at Aoki and what he's done throughout his career, Ionetta, uh, yeah, down here last year, but through his career, he's been a high on base percentage type of guy. Uh, I th the thing I like, and I talked to Edgar about this, is it's not a matter of going up there and taking pitches. If they get a pitch early in the count that they like and it's on the plate, uh, go ahead and, and, and try to hit it hard somewhere. The important thing with all of it, and this is what Scott Service was talking to me about, is the two-strike approach that they have and not chasing so many pitches off the plate, cutting the strikeout numbers down. And um, he's, he said that at the beginning of camp, we heard a lot about the meetings, but when these guys hit more times than out there in groups of four, and he would go up to them and ask them, what are you thinking about when you have two strikes? And he said a lot of them have different answers, but there's a thought process there that he wants them all to talk about. And he says when they start to give him their answers, then the collective group of four would start talking about it. And, he, and that's basically what he wanted to do. And he said, in fact, it when we were talking about uh, Ionetta, he said that Ionetta told him what he does is he just tries to shrink the strike zone so that he doesn't chase that slider off the plate. So they, they've, they've really worked hard at it, and I think that you can see it. Um, we have these games on TV, and you get a chance to watch these guys, and I comment about it all the time, just the, the quality of the at-bats we're seeing throughout uh, the lineup, up and down the lineup, top to bottom. Um, but there's been a lot of conversation, and it's been a big point that they've tried to get across to these guys. And, and But I think you also have to look at, at the type of players that they now have in their lineup. Uh, you know, one of the guys that comes to mind, and it's uh, one of the guys that's trying to make this club, uh, is uh, Luis Sardinius and the job that he's doing. And to me, it's kind of impressive, too, because anytime you have to attack things from both sides of the plate, it makes it more difficult. You think about a guy like Sean O'Malley as well. Um, but it seems like this organization really does like the switch hitter as well. 
Well, they do. It's a big advantage if, if you if you can be consistent at it. I, I think that you mentioned Sardinas. I think the big thing with him, if you look at his at-bats tonight, um, it, it, there's been a variety of counts to him, and even his last base hit was on a first-pitch breaking ball, but it was in the middle of the plate. He didn't just take it for a strike. Um, it, it was right there for him to hit, so they let him go and, and be aggressive with it. They want these guys to be aggressive in the strike zone, even if it's the first pitch or two. And, and that's something that Scott Service talked to me about. He said, look, I just want you to, to know and make sure that this is not a situation where we're up here just trying to take pitches and work counts. It's different than that. And I think that's what we've seen more than anything. Now, on the other side of this, Bill, is the pitching. And they are going after, I mean, you look at Tony Zick's numbers this spring. This is a guy who is clearly controlling the zone. And it's why they were so high on him even before, you know, they got to see him face-to-face -face in spring training. Well, they saw him last year. He really turned the corner at tremendous September. We saw the electric arm, 96, 97 or more, and a good slider. Uh, and this spring... Uh, you know, it, it's been a little up and down, but that's spring training for you. But more and better of late, when you have that good of stuff and you can get ahead and have some fastball command, you don't have to have plu-perfect fastball command, but if you can get ahead and get the hitter in a compromised position where you've got another wipeout pitch for the hitter to deal with, you're going to have a lot of success. And uh, he, he has to know that he has that. Uh, but again, you need to keep refining. They, they, he, he used his changeup, I guess, in his last turn, Mike. And, and boy, when you got that kind of fastball and you can uh, have a changeup for lefties, that's, uh, that's dirty. It really is. I, that's the, the one thing for me with him that is impressive is it's, you don't find many guys, and we saw this from him last year, and, and yeah, it was for a month, but that throw as hard as he throws and throws as many strikes as he's able to throw with all of his pitches. And uh, look, 97, when you know it's coming, is hard to square up. But when you're not sure, it makes it even more difficult. So he kind of fits perfectly right into their program along with having excellent stuff. Yeah, and it's not just, uh, you know, uh, Zick, you guys. Don Roach, 13 strikeouts, zero walks. Taiwan Walker has come in. 13 strikeouts, just the one walk. I, I mean, it seems like these guys are getting the message. This is the, the attack that we're going we're gonna to use. Well, I think that's where Jerry DePoto, if he has that knack or that sense, I'm not suggesting that he doesn't know anything about position players or hitters, but I think he's got that ability to look inside of organizations and made deals and found guys that, that can really pitch that maybe other organizations don't value as much. And a guy like Roach, I'm not going to say he's not going to make the club, but yeah. that's some nice pitching depth in AAA, a guy that can start and uh, clearly has that right ability, you know, those uh, low, low walk, high strikeout numbers. Uh, of course, Taiwan Walker. Yeah. My goodness, that's, uh, that's a star on the rise. And they're saying, you know, more and more, though, even if maybe you're not going to make this team coming out of spring training, uh, Mike, you're going to be rewarded if you accept, you know, this mindset and our approach, whether it is as an offensive player um, or as a pitcher. No, I think that's absolutely right. And, and they make sure that they talk to these guys all the time. If you watch them on the backfields when they're working out and the things that they're trying to do, you'll constantly see one of the coaches or even Scott Service pulling guys aside and talking to them, and that's what they're doing. They're, they're reassuring them that it, you may not be there yet as far as this program goes, but if you stick with it and you show an ability to get there, you will get rewarded for it. And that's a that's not an easy thing to do when you're trying to make a club. Typically, you're going to go back to what ended up getting you here to begin with, but you, you have to constantly keep that in mind. And if they go out, even if they have a good outing, um, and, Bill, you, you can speak to this because I'm sure you had these conversations before. Maybe you were getting away with some pitches and some things, so just because you were able to have a good inning doesn't necessarily mean that everything was going well, and they seem to stay on top of that. I think the, 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 the energy for communication, the energy for investing in players, uh, this is a new age, and, and players are getting an awful lot of that. You know, Mike, uh, you and A came up in a different time. You know, young players stay quiet, young players stay out of the way, do your job or you may be gone, may not hear anything until the ax drops. And you kind of have to watch the game, uh, try to rub shoulders with guys that maybe will invest in you, older players, but you were kind of on your own. And I think this is refreshing, this is smart, uh, and, and I think it's going to pay dividends. Well, I think that you're right. And, and to your point, Bill, if you just watch this camp and the meetings that they have, 
what they do is they, they have the young guys, even guys that are, have no chance to make this club, get up in the middle of the room and, and, mm -hmm. and they, they have them tell them who they are and what they like to do and outside of the game, and, and they get them involved in this thing so they take ownership of it. Yeah, well, uh, it's clear that if you're not using the information, you're falling behind. Ciszek, uh, they're clearly controlling the zone. We are headed to the bottom of the eighth. Mariners coming to the bat right after this. That is about as wild a line score as you want to see as we get ready for the bottom of the eighth inning here at the Peoria Sports Complex here in Root Sports. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers in the Root Sports crew. Take you back to Luis Sardinus, 0 1 count, bases loaded in the fifth. Mike, you got all of it. And that is not a bad pitch. That fastball is probably just off the inside corner, and he was able to get the barrel to it. You can see how short and quick his swing was. Again, a switch hitter hitting that home run right handed. Leads the club with 14 runs knocked in. Here on the spring, Eric Surkamp continues for Oakland. He came on in the fifth inning. Sean O'Malley is the hitter. O'Malley, 15 for 30 here in the spring with a homer. Four runs knocked in two doubles and a triple and he's five out of six in base stealing so they'd love to have him on here don't forget coming up tomorrow Taiwan Walker at Colorado he'll be the starting pitcher there and then Felix starts Friday we'll have that game for you on TV yeah, yeah. Friday against the White Sox. <laughs> he did go, so he'll play umpire Lance Barrett. For Sir Camp, it's his Second strikeout, make that third strikeout. I think Bob Melvin may give him the rest of the week off. <laughs> Taking one for the team. Here's Montero, first time up. Montero, 222 this spring. 10 for 36, two doubles, four runs, batted in. Bounce yeah. it out of play. He 
Jesus done a great job again to get himself into or keep himself in shape at that big turnaround coming into the 15 season. And holding on to the tip is catcher Maxwell, two down. Yeah, go Mariners! A quick two outs here via strikeouts for Sir Camp. Here's Rob Brantley. Almost bounced into the window of Mike Flowers here. One of the things about Brantley, since the Mariners were able to get him from the White Sox, he's aggressive, isn't he? First, he second pitch, yeah. he's gotten it loose. Yeah, he likes to let it go. Like that, line drive, right center field, bounces off the fence. As we were talking about first, second pitch, he's going to work, not messing around. And we'll take it. Looks like a breaking ball. It is right in the middle of the plate. It's his third double since uh, take joining the ball club. I want to bring up Stefan Romero. He's been one of their hottest hitters. Maybe he can hit one out of here. Give the Mariners the lead. Brantley now six for 19 since joining the Mariners from the White Sox. First pitch to Romero outside. Making a very strong bid to make this ball club. 12 for 28, one homer, seven runs, knocked in, two doubles. One-0 -oh pitch. Takes a strike. For Sir Camp, his next pitch will be 70 in the ball game. So he's definitely going to have a few days off. Today's Wednesday. See you next Tuesday. Yeah. Sir Camp's been with the Giants, White Sox, and Dodgers. Two and one. Strike two. Two balls, two strikes. Short camp signed by the Athletics in early December as a free agent. Originally drafted by the Giants, sixth round back in 2008. Two and two. Struck him out. Gives up a devil, proves to be harmless. Ninth inning coming up. A's by a run. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. The indomitable nature of...
Tink here at the Ford Sports Desk. While it was in question whether or not this game was going to go into tomorrow, it looks like we will get it in today. And that means that our next broadcast won't be until Friday at 1 o'clock against the Chicago White Sox. Felix will be towing the rubber in that one. And then Saturday against the Dodgers, it's Wade Miley. And finally, James Paxton will go for the hometown nine against the Kansas City Royals. Monday, uh, Saturday, Monday, and Friday. All three of those games are 1 o'clock start times. Hope you will join us for that. And we have a new pitcher, guys, out on the mound for the Mariners. Blake Parker takes over, Angie, and Blake Parker, seventh game for him. He's 0-1 with a 3-1 ERA. Look forward to seeing Felix on Saturday. You think jump at it at you in, in particular in, in his, uh, what is he, he's gone a couple third, of Third, I outings. believe, yeah. It'll be yeah. his third. Felix is Friday. He's on one with a five six eight. Yeah, I thought that he looked really good in his last outing. Uh, his first outing had a tough time getting his fastball down. Wasn't happy with his command. He's had a very good curveball and changeup combination, and he was happy about that. But he made his adjustments, uh, and so I expect him. And, and I asked him before his last outing if he was going to work on anything, and he said the only thing was just his fastball command. Outside of that, he wanted to compete. So I imagine we're going to see a lot of the same from him on Friday. And then if you haven't had a chance to see Wade Miley pitch, he's a lot of fun. Don't blink. Don't blink. He works fast. He throws a lot of strikes. He's going to get the start on Saturday. Um, but both of those two, they, they look like they're ready to go. Jeff Reardon look like Blake Parker. Didn't miss by much. One and two. Right elbow surgery last June 16. Had some time in the Mexican Winter League. 16th round pick of the Cubs back in 06. High pop, Montero taking a look. The wind still blowing out to right field, but not as fiercely as it did back at 7:10 when we started. Most of the big crowd has gone home. Good crowd tonight, 10,014. Berm was pretty filled up. Here comes the one two. Right field on a line. Romero's right there. Well, the pitchers tomorrow will have better conditions. <laughs> Things are supposed to have calmed down. I think it's the high is 82 degrees. It should be perfect for them. And I think they'll be ecstatic. Tyler Marinkov struck out last time. Mariners home ninth on the bottom third of the order. There's O'Malley. Just scatting. Mariners getting down the line. Good shape, good throw by O'Malley. Two away. Let's see. That is Steve Ciszek. Mariners closer. Two outs for Jacob Brugman. Spells Jacob J A Y C O B. Two outs, nobody on here in the top of the ninth. Popping in a strike.
Teams have combined for 25 runs, 27 hits, and three errors. That is a fair ball. Montero feeds the pitcher. Good execution. One, two, three in the ninth. Bottom third of the Mariners. Coming up here in a night to get some autographs, and it's been a good night for that person, that's for sure. 13 12 A's Mariners Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines. Mariners here in Peoria, Arizona at the Sports Complex. 13 12. Look at a wild one to say the least. One of the highlights for the Mariners, a grand slam by Luis Sardinius. That was back in the fifth inning. Still a decent number of fans here with the rally cap song. We had a big crowd of 10,014, but things have thinned out a lot over the last hour or so. Dejo Lee's going to lead things off, and he has had a good night. Walked, has a base hit, scored two runs. As it oftentimes happens in spring training, there's a gentleman on the mound with the number 50, and he's not listed anywhere in the literature. They go to baseball. Wow, listen to the fans getting on Lance Barrett. Boy, they're letting him hear it. Oh, man. <laughs> Breaking ball, folding. Deo's got some work to do here behind 0-2. Gone on three pitches. Four of the last five Mariner hitters have Cade. After the first pitch fastball, a couple of breaking balls, and that one down out of the strike zone, chased it. Picked up a base hit on a breaking ball his last time up, was not able to lay off of that one. This is Ryan Brazier. He pitched in that 11 11 ball game back last Thursday. Sardinius the hitter. <laughs> Two and zero to Sardinius. Grand slam in the fifth, base hit to left in the seventh. He's two for four. Two and one. That service and the boys will be at it again tomorrow at Colorado. Taiwan Walker on the mound. Back here at Peoria Friday for Felix. Three and one.
Felix Hernandez will be opening the season at Texas against Cole Hamels. High fly ball. Easy play center field. Two down. Catch made out there by Jacob Brugman. Regular season will be upon us before you know it. And all these games, all those games will be for real. That's going to be a lot of fun. Parents will have their team set. Here's Navarro, last hope here for the Mariners in the ninth. And he did go. It's getting about that point, too, with the regular guys that are going to be on the roster and know it. They're starting to look forward to that opening day. Yep. Navarro fouls it off. <laughs> Navarro coming over earlier in the spring. Most recently had been with the Angels. Putting just a buck 33, four for 30 this spring. One and two. Tried to throw his best breaking ball, spiked it. Probably overthrowing it a little bit. Mariners stats to their last strike. Here's the one two with two outs. Down a run. Field straight away and deep for Navarro. Frazier ready with the one two. Strike three call, and that's your ball game. So the Athletics win it 13 to 12. A wild one here in Peoria. My goodness. And that's our story. Big numbers put up on the board by these two ball clubs. We'll see plenty of the A's during the regular season. For Mike Flowers and our entire crew, Angie Mentek and Bill Kruger, I'm Dave Sims. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll talk to you again on TV on Friday, radio tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your night. Mariners lose it by one so long from Peoria. <laughs>